trees, insects, plants, other trees, bugs, so many bugs, legally unidentifiable crowds of people, we have footage of all of that and more, recorded on super highest quality SVHS. Put 9986 exact change only in a plain envelope and mail it to me. Footage so realistic, you'll think we've taken the very life force of the trees and plants and bugs and things, and you're right, but they live on in these tiny magnetic patterns and in Valhalla, where all warrior souls go to feast for eternity. Dave's Overstock Stock. Send money, please. All right, people, we got a big problem. Slope-style events are our biggest draws for the Winter X Games, and those are Olympic events now. We need new events for 2015 that are not just things people saw a year ago in Sochi. That's easy to solve. There's a bunch of winter sports that haven't reached Olympic level yet. Ringette, bandy, freestyle icicle jousting, ice yachting. No. We invented extreme sports. Any new event has to tread the line between athletic achievement and suicidal spectacle, otherwise we're just wasting our time. Exactly. We need to keep the eyeball rule in mind, gentlemen. There's a direct correlation between viewer and participant eyeballs. The more likely it is that someone's going to lose an eye, the higher the viewer count. Our target this year from ESPN is 1.78 eyes per athlete. How are we supposed to meet that if we add ice yachting? Give everyone on the yachts a pointed stick? I'm going to pretend I didn't hear that suggestion. Two pointed sticks? Well, we could always look at the suggestion box. Yeah. Ugh. No, no, wait. One of these could be the next X Games phenomenon. There are hundreds of ideas here. Did you take out all the ones that are just outdoor sex? Dozens of ideas here. All right. Let's hear them. Okay, well, we've got uh, downhill dressage. I like that. An expansion to our existing family of slope events. Wait, wait, wait. Isn't dressage the one with the horses? Uh, yes. Do you ski and meet the horse? Do you do a jump and like land on the horse? Uh, no, you take the horse down the slope with you. Uh, it gets four tiny skis instead of horseshoes. Wouldn't it be better to give the horse two really long skis? You know, one for the left side, one for the right side? Snowboards, even edgier. Maybe we should put this one on the back burner for now. No, no, no I, I like this, but horses are boring. Little girls like horses. We need something that'll appeal to our Gen X and Gen Y core demographic. Ooh, what about an angry bull? A moose? What about the Humane Society? I don't think it's practical for one person to ride the entire Humane Society down a hill. Oh, no, 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 no. I don't think the Humane Society will let us get away with putting four skis... Or two snowboards. ...any kind of winter sports equipment on an animal and then shoving it down a hill. What about two people in a horse costume? Love it. What else isn't there? Uh, freestyle airdrop? Oh, what's that? Well, you get dropped out of a low-flying helicopter, uh, and then you do tricks on the way down. Spectacular! How long does each run last before you deploy the parachute? Uh, there is uh, no parachute. What happens at the end? Well, uh, at the end, they, uh, they stop falling. Yeah, there's, there's a picture here. Oh. Okay, why don't we leave that one in the parking lot? What's next? Yeah, well, there's, uh, let's see here. Highland Inferno Big Air Super Slalom. This one comes with a video. I love the branding already. Did we just watch a man die? Don't worry, kid. It doesn't count unless you see the life drain from their eyes. And we call that a viewer resonance moment when it happens. Put that one in the sex crimes pile. What else do we have? I... Uh... Oh, okay. Well, this one looks good. Uh, this is Rocket Skeleton. So it's a faster version of an existing Olympic sport. Yes! Take that, IOC. Play the video. Woo! All right. Here we go. Huh. Okay. Uh, well, there were no viewer residence moments there. We have enough problems with people thinking our athletes are all potted up on the hootie mac. No. Uh, well, there's, uh, 
human cannon wall? Is it just being shot out of a cannon into a wall? Yes? Can we use the outside wall of a half pipe so we don't have to build a new venue? More importantly, can we get the monster logo on the cannon? Ooh! Hello, is this Greg smith -Eams? I'm from ESPN's X Games. We'd like to explore the possibility of getting professional stabbing in the next Winter X Games. Oh. Oh, I, I'm so sorry for your loss. Oh. Um, is Justin smith -Eams there? Oh dear. Um, is... Is anyone still alive? We have returned. We have returned to one of our favorite rooms at UVic. One of, uh, this one and the one below it are very similar, so I'm not entirely sure which one's which, but uh, this one we shot the Flaming Clown Spiders video in, and it's down the hall from where we shot stuff like the greeting card sketch or the, the toaster, um, the one and a half slices of toast video. Uh, I think we also did the rapid fire marketing video here. A lot of marketing sketches here. It's as close as we get to a to a uh, uh, cool sort of boardroom when we can't get into Metal Lab. Paul and I actually came up with the concept for this video. Uh, we were walking downtown, uh, and you told me about Graham Chapman's lecture slash video series. Yeah, the, uh, it looks like a brown trouser job. Uh, and one of the parts in it was he was talking about uh, hanging out with the Dangerous Sports Club, which is apparently a thing in England. Anyway, uh, so we were, we were talking about the like these guys doing these stupid sports, and somehow we got onto the idea that uh, that there's a bunch of sports that used to be in the X Games, but are now in the Olympics. Because in Sochi, for the first time, you had slope style, which used to be an X Games sport, and now it's in the Olympics to attract the youths or something. Mm -hmm. We were joking about how the execs should all have like cans of Red Bull or whatever in front of them, but Red Bull does not sponsor the X Games because Red Bull has their own extreme sports malarkey. Monster sponsors the X Games. Monster does not sponsor us, but if they want to throw us a couple bucks, that'd be nice. So, because the Olympics took all the X Games sports, the X Games has got to come back with some more sports, but they've got to like up the ante. Mm -hmm. It's got to get even more ridiculous. Yeah, and uh, then we brainstorm some stupid sports. Yeah. And uh, then a couple, then I think the next day, I wrote the script. I realized like about two pages in, some personality traits were starting to emerge, so uh, I named them Boss, Go-Getter, uh, Sensible, and Toady, uh, and then sort of uh, figured out who was going to be who in that and then refined the lines a little bit, so uh, Toady was even more of a Toady, and Boss was, like, Boss was pretty clear that they were like the person they had to appeal to, uh, but uh, I, I kind of like doing it like that, like describing people by role rather than by... Uh, by name because it makes them gender ambiguous. Mmm, ginseng. Ooh, guarana. Really? How much, how much, what, how much were these? 13 bucks? I think we may have shown a few little things in, in Loading Times before, but the like group writing process, there is definitely like a cutoff point for where it, the like, imp, like input from all sorts of different people is great, up until a certain point, until you have to actually turn into like a real script, and then people talking and making suggestions actually makes the thing much worse. Yeah, exactly, because because <laughs> it's because uh, it because you have to take all these ideas and then you have to focus them, and there's always ideas that are like funny and good, but you know they just can't go in the script, and uh, so yeah, uh, the the group writing process is is uh, increases in usefulness until it absolutely decreases till zero, <laughs> and that is the point where you actually have to put together a finished script that is cohesive.
Monster packs a punch but has a smooth flavor that you can really pound down. <laughs> Athletes, musicians, anarchists, <laughs> students, <laughs> road warriors, metalheads, geeks, hipsters, and bikers dig it. You will too. So everyone. Yeah. We're not actually marketing to anyone. No, uh, conformists don't like it. Mm-hmm. The uh-huh. squares. Scrubs. Yeah. <laughs> Scrubs hate this shit. Anarchists. Anarchists. In this video, I am playing Toadie, which is a role I selected for myself. So, uh, as you can see, I have my hair done up in the extremely trendy... My hair's not quite long enough, so it's a little further back on my head than I think the super trendy, like, top messy bun look is. Um, and I probably didn't do it right, so who cares? Uh, but, you know, I have, like, the, the blazer and, like the, like, the big necklace, and I look very much like... A 26-year-old marketing student named Jenna, who's very ambitious. Uh, I am the boss's favorite. I work late hours if I need to. In my spare time, I like to relax by doing yoga by the sea. If I met Jenna in real life, I would not like her. <laughs> Do you like Jenna? Oh, she's my favorite. I, as the boss, she's my favorite. Uh, Jenna likes to party! I don't like to party so much anymore. I'm kind of getting on in years. But I like to feel that I'm recapturing my youth day by day by hiring young people to work with me for the for developing the X Games. Jenna does not like to party. Jenna is really uptight, but she thinks she's cool. <laughs> I used to be cool a while ago. We I... were never cool. Can I see that real quick? Let's see what we're gonna have. <laughs> that was less good than I was talking about. There you go. You made it in between the posts. Too. Could somebody throw me my monster? <laughs> just like, know. just like you sit down. Right we can now. just like we can throw a monster. Sh- yeah, that would be good. I could just slide <laughs> it right Jeez. into my hand. Jeez. Yeah, that works. Better. Yeah. We can throw a monster at you. The Dasani works because it's also Coca Cola. <laughs> Unintentional. Oh. Words that are never. Ever good. What? The receptacle, the receptacle is fucked. <laughs> Don't worry. Don't even worry about it. Don't even worry about it. So what you're doing right now is you're worrying about it. Yeah. No. Which you've been explicitly told not to. <laughs> it's dangerous to worry about it. That is deeply unsettling. Harry has a headache. So what are you doing here? We are attaching the GoPro to Harry for the <gasps> sequence when we need to throw a GoPro down a hill. And it's hoped that Harry will give the GoPro a sense of balance and mass and provide the correct length for his tumble. So it doesn't look like we've just thrown a GoPro down a hill, but instead have it mounted on a person. Cam, this was Cam's idea. Cam, this is a really good idea. I approve. Thank you. We are going to heave Harry, our loyal creepy doll, off of um, this cliff for entertainment purposes. I feel like either we need the music from the right stuff or Koyana Skotsi playing in the background. Let's see how this goes. Prediction, he gets caught on something halfway down. James, can you lob him again? What? Can you just like chuck him from there? Or do you think he'll get caught? Is it still recording?
Did the GoPro just fly off and hit? Alright people, we got a big problem. Slope style events. It's summer, and summer means outdoor sports, and outdoor sports means badminton. But badminton's kind of bad by itself. I mean, what is a shuttlecock but just an exercise in futility? You could use anything to play badminton. You could use a pine cone. But that's not very interesting. What is interesting is food. But here's the thing, as you can tell from our incredibly well-fitting lab coats, we are serious scientist types. And before we start throwing caution and other foodstuffs into the wind, we gotta get a control rally going with the two most skilled badminton players that we could find. And then we're gonna see if we can improve on the shuttlecock, nature's perfect shuttlecock. We're gonna make Ben and Serge ruin some food. It's gotta be someone's fetish. Like, there's gonna be so many YouTube views. That's not the point of this experiment, though. <laughs> it's the point of this experiment. Gentlemen, we are gonna to need to establish a baseline of what a decent rally looks like with a standard shuttlecock before we start this experiment. Uh, please, continue as you were. One. Good start. <laughs> okay. One! Six. Was that six? Wow. Not bad, not bad. All right. <laughs> All right, here we go. Boy, it's lost in the sun. All right, so so far we're at six. Interference. This is the this is the good one. Those are the practice ones. This is the good one, though. Ooh. No. <laughs> 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 13! That's pretty good. <laughs> All right. So it looks like I would say that uh, any number of hits between 2 and 17 would uh, count as an improved shuttlecock. Kathleen, what do we got in the cooler for them to start with? Well, I think we should start uh, with our varieties of firm and dry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so uh, who doesn't love a nice grape tomato? Oh, lovely. Who's at a disadvantage? Me or you? At the surf? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh! I, I couldn't even see it. It's invisible! Speedy. It's got some go. Yeah, all right. <laughs> One. I think what we've determined is that the grape tomato, while firm and pleasing, is too small. Mm. So how about a nice Roma tomato? Ah, oh, okay, yeah, okay. Upsize. That'll be good. Would you prefer yellow or... Red. Let's try yellow. The red got lost in the light. Okay. I feel like the yellow the yellow is gonna be worse. We'll see. All right. We'll, we'll try red if we lose it. <laughs> what happens when it goes through the net? Um, two points. Hey! hey. Wait, for who? Both of you. Ooh! Yeah, tied. I wonder if the lack of leaves on the back of that tomato are going to make it more or less aerodynamic. Weighty! All right, so serve it up. Yeah, here we go. Yeah. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I don't think this one made it. All right. <laughs> Tomatoes, inappropriate shuttlecock material. Shall we stay within the, uh, the kingdom of the plants? Yeah, I think so. Uh, and I think that Ben should probably serve next for, you know, equitability. Agreed. Kiwi, anyone? Oh, hell yeah. I haven't seen one of those since one versus 100. This feels like firm. Is that heavier or lighter than the tomato? Oh, heavier by a lot. All right, two hand. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. A little bit of outside That's interference. A tree interference on that one. 
Oh, I returned it. Yeah, I think you just gotta get some more oomph on it. The nice thing about the kiwi is that we won't be able to tell whether or not it's fuzz or dry grass on the outside. Yeah. When you eat it, that is. I feel like the momentum that the kiwi offers in its, Three. In its spin really adds a new twist to this game. Kiwis, acceptable shuttlecock replacement. Champions, prepare to serve champignons. Two fun guys hitting some fun guy. This is really light. Yeah, it seems like a one-handed. Yeah, yeah. I got a good feeling about the mushroom. Yeah? Yeah. It's a phrase I don't hear nearly often enough. I got a good feeling about the mushroom. Yeah. I've heard it too much now. <laughs> <laughs> Why does this keep happening to me? Here, Serge. Hey, we have extra mushrooms. I got a good feeling about the mushroom. I test so much go. Yeah. It's so spongy. <laughs> we keep breaking the experiment. I figured the mushroom would do well because it's sort of shaped like a shuttlecock. Well, the mycelium structure really sort of echoes the standard cork of a regular shuttlecock. I think what we're missing out on is yeah, we're definitely missing out on fins, is what we're missing out. All right. Well, how about something else that also doesn't have fins? Ah. Uh -huh. What if you're in France and you need to play an emergency game of badminton? Le croissant. Can I catch this with my mouth? I was going to say, can we have a little bite tax between hits here? All right, here we go. Ooh. <laughs> oh. We had somewhat of a rally. <laughs> Are you okay, Serge? Oh, yeah. All right. You're going to need to use more of a crescent swing oh, for this okay. one. <laughs> to the moon. Too far. Go. <laughs> How about just to the other side of the net? You know, the croissant was actually originally made to resemble the moon. Huh. Which one? Uh, I'm gonna say Io. Oh. The problem is that this is a French pastry and you're putting too much English on it. How about half a croissant? It's split in two again. It's fairly consistently four. That's not bad. Half a croissant. Acceptable shuttlecock. Yeah. The flaky pastry means it has many ablative layers. Mm -hmm. I, I, honestly, a decrusted croissant like that is quite terrifying. I think you need something with a little bit more weight and something a little bit firmer. So why not? A perfect and fresh apricot. All right. Little jam for your croissant. I love it with you. I don't know what an apricot is. It's like a tiny peach. Oh, OK. I lost it. <laughs> a deep hitting. Impressive. <laughs> Replacement apricot. Yeah. Tonight the raccoons will feast. Here's the money shot. <laughs> Do you just lose it? I lost it. <laughs> so what you're saying is you need something bigger. Yeah, too but, small. Okay, too small, bigger, harder. Mmm, more millennial. Can we afford this? That's what the Patreon money's for. Oh. We're playing badminton, not tennis. <laughs> now, this can't, one of you might die. <laughs> Actually, we really should check for allergies beforehand, but uh. Oh, it's weighty. <laughs> <laughs> I was afraid I was gonna get shot in the nuts. <laughs> this is a two-hander. Okay. We've only got one avocado. Oh, we didn't splurge. And we will need it back. Okay, we're just gonna do baby serves yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's, it's still alive. <laughs> <laughs> I think the baby serve strategy worked though. Let's, let's incorporate that. Went over, sorry. 
Well, it didn't feel right before, but I think it's ready for eating now. Oh, yeah, yeah. It just, it just, it doesn't bounce. Well, in your defense, this did split. Oh. <laughs> Maybe an operation. Oh, like. It still counts. It's the ball with the secret ball. Yeah, there's the real avocado. You know you're not supposed to eat that part, right? Yeah, you're supposed to play badminton with it. All right. Ooh. Woo Ooh. That was so much better. What a huge improvement. Interesting. I'd say that that was that was just down to Serge's lack of skill. That had nothing to do with the fact that it was an avocado pit. You <laughs> yep. <laughs> this also solves my biggest problem with the standard shuttlecock, which is that you can't sprout a tree from it. So we're we're coming down. You need something with a little bit of weight to it. You need something that's visible. You need something that's easy to return. So the small food is not working as well. So I think we can move on to what we're calling the wet course. Mm. Oh, good. Wait, the other things weren't wet. I'm literally wearing four different foods right now. Who needs a refresh? Is that just yogurt, like in the can? It's a pot of yogurt. Oh, well, I guess it's not a can. All right, Serge. Good luck, buddy. How's it feel? Actually, it's a good weight. Yeah. And it's got a good, it's got a good shape. Cool. And I definitely know how to analyze badminton things, so. <laughs> Good pop, good pop. This is how we prep it before it goes into the tubes. <laughs> oh, <stop. laughs> I don't even know where it went, but it's covered in strawberry. That's why it's important to have the fruit on the bottom. Mm -hmm. We should give Ben a serve. All right, Ben, for science, now it's your serve. I feel like the serve is the, like, whoever's serving this is the one who's gonna get coated. Yeah. For science. Yeah. Oh, it's, it maintained. It's still holding. It's whole. All right. Maybe I had a faulty yogurt. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's just me. You managed to you managed to empty the whole thing though with that. So very impressive, and maybe a faster way of speed eating yogurt. Mm. But what if you want to play badminton, but you're also a vegan? Is that allowed, Kathleen? Well, I mean, we have to test for every variable. So that's why we've brought tofu. Oh, just the whole thing. Yeah. I mean, we can try it shucked and unshucked. <laughs> There's nothing in the rules that says a bean can't be shuttlecock. We should do avocado technique again. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I think it's the best thing we've done so far. <laughs> <clears throat> is it extra firm? It's... It is. Mm. Mm. Regulation. <laughs> it's so heavy. <laughs> See, this is why tofu gets a bad rap. People just serve it poorly. <laughs> That's for my vegans out there. It's, uh... Is so, it tofu wet? Very. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's liquid in there. Yeah, good. In future, we may want to go with the deep fried mm, tofu, tofu puffs. Yes. Yeah. So, do you want? A br half a brick each? Uh, uh, yeah, half, half a brick to start. There you go. It's cold and wet. <laughs> Tofu. It's just like playing badminton, you know, at night in the rain. Yeah. Yeah. Which we do frequently. Constantly. Yeah. Oh, it already comes like kind of pre cube Oh no, it's not pre cube That's just my badminton racket. <laughs> you printed on the tofu. <laughs> you slice. Why'd you slice it? <laughs> I don't think that was me. I don't actually know if that's cottage cheese or yogurt on this anymore. We haven't had cottage cheese, so I'm hoping it's not. My guess is it's tofu. A nice imprint there. Here we go. Yeah. Sorry, it came at a weird angle. It dropped faster than I thought it would. <laughs> I'm gonna have a tofu bruise. <laughs> I 
I wanted, to, <laughs> I wanted to commit to this one because I felt like I chickened out of the yogurt last time. So this time I decided I'm just going to go for it and I think I paid the price. <laughs> An acceptable replacement shuttlecock. Let's stay in the realm of pressed and white. Break out the bocconcini. Still don't know what a lot of these foods are. It's an Italian cheese ball and it comes with its own preserving liquid. Oh. This is the way. I'm gonna get hit in the face again, aren't I? I'm not gonna aim for the face. <laughs> they never do. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. This one feels like we could get something out of it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good bounce. Really good, yeah. Oh! oh. <laughs> Ooh! Goodbye. So far, I mean, it's actually pretty decent. It's holding together, which is making me the most happy. <laughs> but I think, like, like weight-wise, this isn't too bad. And it's, it's this is this is user error. <laughs> Oh no! I mean, it's split nicely in half. We do have some tomatoes, if you wanna. <laughs> Broken cheese. Little, little snack between rounds. Ben, do you wanna? Do you want your own cheese yeah, ball? Yeah, sure. Let's start with a fresh one. For science. Here, I'll let you select your own cheese ball. Choose your fighter. This seems like the proper candidate. All right, nice and easy. Yeah. Oh, I got milk in my eyes. Whoa! Ugh. That's our best rally yet. I think this one's a resounding yes. Yeah. But one last one for fun. And that's it. <laughs> Bocconcini. Good for everything. Great for bocce. I feel like considering that uh, Ben and Serge both felt that the Bocconcini with their round and bounciness were pleasing and, and decent. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that our next candidate's gonna be a real winner. It's a pickled egg. It's got many things in common with the bocaccini, right? It's in brine, it's round, it's white, it's protein based. You'll find it in the dairy section. Chicken's lamb. Should be basically exactly the same. Yeah. All right, my friend. Gross. I think the structural integrity is what's causing the problem here. Yeah, that was not user error that time. I'll offer you an egg in this trying time. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. We're gonna start blasting. Good. Yeah. Let's just take that again. Okay, before I serve this back, I need to show the the perfect square that just got taken out of the egg. <laughs> Just the absolute perfect like square shucked out of this egg. The badminton rackets are making an impact. Good God. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> it's fucking perfect. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's one way to get the yolk out of it. Pickled egg, acceptable shuttlecock. Do you think we should move on to the dessert course? Absolutely. Ian, are you eating one of our science eggs? I mean, we've we've managed to extract all the value from it for science. I just want some of the cleric content at this point. Fair, fair. Let's move on to the dessert course. You like donuts, don't you? This is the tastiest one so far. I almost don't want to see these ones go. These have uh, an offensive powder shield as well. Sorry, quick quality control. I'm glad you got to test it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Taking one for the team here. Precautious. Yeah. Do you want to get the egg off of your badminton racket or is that adding weight? <laughs> All right, great. Do you want to also test for science? Yeah, that's great. Oh, yeah, okay. I definitely have high expectations for this one. Ah. Okay, you ready? Let's do it, I'm born ready. Oh, it Ooh. broke apart. That was five though. That was like one of the best rallies we've had. Amazing. Yeah. 
Go I think ahead. we do one more. Oh yeah, easy. Easy one more. Oh, mm -hmm. I meant of the... <laughs> Sorry, my bad. No, I don't blame you, dude. Those are good. Mm -hmm. I wore court shoes. Not Probably not the best idea. I was told badminton. Yeah, cleats might have been the right call on this one. I definitely feel like we're seeing some of the best badminton performance we've seen all day here. Which isn't really saying much, but you know, you work with what you have. The powdered sugar really helps the integrity. Mm -hmm. Six, that's a new record. Yeah, powdered donut. Powdered donut, acceptable shuttlecock replacement. Shuttlecock, my fellow scientists. Oh, don't mind if I do. So the powdered donuts are pretty good. Um, do you think it's the sugar that helped? Oh, it didn't hurt. Yeah, I think certainly the doughiness made it more aerodynamic. Kathleen, what if we combined the power of the sugar mm -hmm the power of the baked good, mm -hmm. and the responsiveness of dairy-based oh, shuttlecocks. Oh, yeah, because that, that's like where we've seen our greatest success. Mm -hmm. So if we even case the dairy in some sort of baked good, I think we might uh, we might find our capper. <laughs> Ice cream sandwiches. Fantastic. Mm. Isn't this like against James's religion? They were in a cooler. He doesn't have to know. Oh, okay. I think it's important that we definitely unwrap the shuttlecocks before we uh, oh, yeah. serve them up. The way, the way it flopped out is not really, you know. You don't think we got lots of uh, structural integrity here? That's the word I'm looking for. Am I going this way or this way with the serve? Maybe fold it in half like a double decker. Yeah. I'll follow the advice of the scientists here. They do know best. Yeah, all right, you ready? Yeah. <laughs> I, I think we're gonna need to, to have some tests over on uh, Ben's side as well. We're sure we don't wanna keep them wrapped? Give it a, give it a little bit <laughs> more. Go on. A little bit more spice than I did. Okay. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Thanks. There you go. <laughs> All right, good. I don't even know if this is ice cream anymore. I'm just gonna kind of launch it. Yeah. Like a trebuchet. Yeah. Trebucket. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd it go? Oh, there it is. <laughs> Surge. You managed to evacuate all of the ice cream in it, and now it's just some nicely, like, stacked cookie. <laughs> Moreover, that might have been my favorite sound I've heard all day. Yeah. Do you want to try it in the wrapper this time? Yeah. 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 Let's give it in the wrapper. Yeah. You ready, my friend? Oh, sure. <laughs> Where'd it go? Oh, no, it's in there still. All right, let's keep going. Yeah, let me fold it back up to, uh -huh. pre to preserve the integrity of the test. Science, yeah. yeah. Of course, of course. I think we're just playing badminton with a wet napkin at this ah. point. <laughs> oh, good, the sightseeing tour came by. I heard them say, and if you see over this way, you can see some grown men who should know better. <laughs> we really should. <laughs> Should we have Ben serve once more with a fresh sandwich? Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, here we go. Gentle. 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 Baby touch. Baby touch. <laughs> I'm too afraid to hit it now. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Gentle, gentle. Colleagues, if nothing else, I think we've managed to teach them fear, which is, uh, an important discovery all on its own. Am I dead? <laughs> you might be. Ah. Their survival instincts have definitely escalated since the beginning. Yeah. Faces and groins covered constantly. <laughs> you returned that? Dang. 
ice cream sandwich, acceptable shuttlecock replacement, Ben, pro badminton player. Oh, finally, I can call my dad. I think that exhausts our supply of potential badminton shuttlecock replacements. Now, we're going to have to take this data back to the lab for analyzation, but I think we've done a lot of really good work here. Ben, Serge, thank you so much for assisting us in science. Could I uh, have one of those ice cream sandwiches? Yeah. All right. Good game, my friend. Oh, just, yeah. is, that, is that allowed? A little sticky, uh, but you know. I think that's You're so okay. covered in yeah. feta cheese. Oh, dude, don't even look at my left donut hand. I don't know what it is. Here, you can have a lukewarm ice cream sandwich Ooh. for your reward. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, no. It's... Oh. Yeah, bye. I don't have mine. There you go. There you go, little bite. <laughs> Actually, it was a studio. Good morning. Huh? You're up early. Huh? What time is it? It's 9.30. At night? No. That's why the sun is up. Oh. Oh! You didn't sleep, did you? Look, if I don't steal Madarama's heart, I'm not gonna get to know Yusuke better. You should go to bed. Nonsense. This is nothing caffeine can't fix. I've made a huge mistake. How's the coffee? Hmm? Oh, it's great. Uh, it restores 30 SP. Uh, it does take a whole evening activity slot to make it, but sometimes it boosts my relationship with Sojiro. Maybe you should take a break from Persona for a while. Spend some time with your real friends. Hanging out with people does give me access to new Personas, but I don't need to spend time with you. You're already a rank 10 confidant. Uh, yes? Okay. You could come and hang out with me. I need to recalibrate the pit on my homebrew sous vide rig. If you're up for it, we could get some distilled water and descale the thermocouples. Oh well, maybe we can hang out some other time? I have to go. I'm gonna make new friends and raise my stats. Maybe you should go to bed instead. Please, if I was gonna waste my day, I could go to work. I mean, you could also do that. Later! Ugh. I actually have no idea how to make new friends. What do you do to meet new people? Don't ask me. I sleep all day and work on hairballs. Okay, what would you do if you were a human, though? Buy more of the good wet food with the chicken and the tuna in it. No, to make friends, Baxter. But that's the best food, though. Everyone would love it. You know, I thought you'd be more helpful. I'm a cat, Kathleen. I have a limited set of priorities. So, should I, like, put an ad on Craigslist? Oh, do you need to buy the good food with the chicken and the tuna online? Is that why you don't always get it? Okay, I'm just gonna post something under the W4W Strictly Platonic category and see what happens. Oh, while you're on there, order some more of the good food. Did I mention it has chicken and tuna in it? So, how many responses have you had? Oh, like 200. And how many want to be platonic friends? Well, nobody so far, but it's only 11 a.m., so I have many hours in the day to receive an email that doesn't also contain an unsolicited dick pic. I remain hopeful. 
Even by your standards, posting that ad seems like a terrible idea. It wasn't a complete loss. I did find somebody who's selling all of Ghost in the Shell's second gig on DVD. I'm going to go pick it up this afternoon. So now you're buying something on Craigslist? Aren't you afraid of getting mugged or stabbed or randomly insulted? No, no. I have staunch guts. So you're abandoning your friend-making plan to just watch anime? No, I'm abandoning my friend-making plan because it's cutting into my Persona 5 time. Isn't that the same thing? Hmm, you're right. It is almost like my Persona 5 party members are my real friends now. No, I meant Persona 5 and anime. Hmm? Did you say something, Ryuji? Never mind. Hi. Hello. I'm, I'm here to buy the DVDs, but not to get stabbed. Good. I would like to sell you DVDs and also not get stabbed. How come you're getting rid of them anyhow? I picked up second gig on Blu-ray. You do know the new Blu-ray release has a ton of audio problems, right? The North American one, yeah, but I got the Japanese. You got the Japanese one? With the English audio tracks? The ones whispered of in Legends. Yes. Whoa. Okay, I'm pretty sure you're not going to stab me. You can come in. I'm Corey. This is Heather. She's here in case you got stabby. Hi. Hi. I'm going to get the DVDs. So, uh, you guys like anime, huh? Yeah. Do you want to hang out and watch something sometime? Maybe. What kind of stuff do you like? We were just about to watch that again. Corey, can I pay for those DVDs and pizza? I want five cheese. I am thou. Thou art I. Thou hast acquired a new vow. It shall become the wings of rebellion that breaketh thy chains of captivity. With the birth of the Weeaboo persona, I have obtained the winds of blessing that shall lead to freedom and new power. So you did end up making friends through Craigslist. Yeah, we watched anime and drank beer. Why did you need to make new friends for that? We could have done that with you. Yeah, I love beer and anime. And I love beer. What about anime? After enough beer, sure. That's like the opposite of me. Too much anime and you start drinking beer? It eh, depends on how much Strike Witches we're watching. I'm a cat, I'm a cat, I'm fluffy, I'm a cat, I'm in the way, I'm a cat, I eat the food and lick my fluff, I'm a cat, meow, 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 meow. You're listening to Corpline here on QWRPFM. Corpline this week is brought to you by Bill's Dills and Chilled Pills. Bill's opening a new pickle and microbrewery in downtown Innsburg. Bill's Dills and Chilled Pills. Bill's got skills with barley mills. Good morning, Innsburg. It's Big G Money here with A Train. How's it going, Alex? Adjusting to this new diet. I don't know if it's ketosis or autophagy. Well, what are you not eating? Eating? I'm no nutritionist, but I believe that you still eat some things on either of those diets. Well, what I do know is I look great and I want to die. Terrific. I hope everyone out there is having a better time here in beautiful Innsburg. Everybody loves it, asterisk. Wait, does it say asterisk? No, but there is one, and I felt it would have been disingenuous not to mention it. Huh. The footnote says, sample size reduced after removing statistical outliers, such as people from Julesburg. Oh, well, they are outliers. Or at least liars. I agree. And now the news!
The fire department will be testing Innsberg's smoke detector this afternoon at 2 p.m. So if you're a smoker, why not huff some cancer sticks around that time and see if the whole thing still works. Reminder that we had to upgrade to a mechanical system after Ethan the fire marshal blew out his sense of smell at the chili cook-off last year. That was good chili, though. At least I think it was. I couldn't taste much after the first bowl. I think the secret ingredient was borax. Oh, is that why my toilet was foaming? And in other news, it's time once again for the NWF Backyard Wrestling Tournament of Heck. And this year, Frampton Downs lost the bid and has been chosen as the neighborhood venue. So, anyone whose property backs onto Adolfo Laneway is invited to watch from the safety of their deck as the tournament trundles through. Any gardening implements or deck furniture left in the backyards will be considered fair game for the no-DQ match for the NWF Hardcore title. So if you've been trying to get rid of any old shovels or sprinkler heads, now's your chance. Make sure to tie a name tag to anything you wish to retrieve later. Oh, is that why we couldn't get any fluorescent tubes to replace the one in the bathroom? Yeah, same reason you can't buy a thumbtack between here and Lesser Miami to save your life. Eee, ouch. In any case, the NWF suggests that you stay at least five meters back to remain clear of the smash zone and bring the kids. At least any of the ones that aren't already in the under-12 battle royale. But seriously, watch out for the mercury from those light tubes. Speaking of airborne contaminants, we go now to Richter Hammock Slam up in the QWRP traffic co-opter. How are things looking, Richter? Graham, we have been up and running for about three hours now, and traffic is flowing smooth like butter. I immediately have two questions. One, where is the traffic running smooth like butter? And two, who is we? Everywhere, Graham, and everyone in Innsberg, too. So to reiterate your statement, everyone in Innsberg is up and moving, and everywhere has great traffic. Turns out adding just a simple bypass between Highway 3 and Crescent Crescent makes everything open up forever. My commute... And the view out the window disagree with you. Richter, people have wanted that bypass for a while, and I agree that it would improve traffic, but that doesn't exist. Not in your Innsberg, Graham, but as I said earlier, I was not referring to everyone in Innsberg as well. I was referring to Innsberg too. the mass simulation that I'm currently running on Innsberg supercomputers. <laughs> Everything makes sense, and I'm so angry. Since when does Innsberg have supercomputers? Yeah, and why does Richter have access to them? Ever since the collapse of Spotcoin, Derek von Spot has had too many PS3s in his home and was having a fire sale. So I picked up a couple and made my own Beowulf cluster. Now I can simulate Innsberg traffic down to the individual vehicle. So you're not talking remotely about the real world. Oh, absolutely not, Graham. I don't have that kind of power yet. However, I can say the traffic is not only smoother, but safer as well. Over the course of the next five years, there will only be two traffic-related fatalities, a Corbin Lubbock and Michael O'Leary. Oh, no. Don't worry. The other Michael O'Leary. Oh, good. Then I will get my driver's license. He's not an oracle casting electronic bones. Actually, Alex, I think if you refer to the historical Greek oracles, Richter's vague and unhelpful prognostications really do actually make him seem pretty oracle-like. And ever since I swapped the copter over to Diesel, I'm often found clouded in smoke. His powers grow by the day. Tell us more, great Nostradamus of the skies. Death to the false prophet. Thank. Thank you, Richter. If anyone at home is curious about what's actually going on traffic-wise in Innsberg, things are really backed up out there because it turns out you have to transport nuclear waste at very low speeds. And extremely inconvenient times of day, evidently. As everyone is no doubt aware by now, the convoy from Chuffield Reactor rolled into town at about 4 a.m. this morning and are expected to clear city limits around 8 p.m. tonight. Well, safety first, though I would advise motorists to budget an additional three hours of transit time. To be fair, Alex, not everyone has to go out of their way to get particularly special coffee, which actually you're drinking on an empty stomach? Yep, my stomach is being replaced by a lava pool of agony, but man, am I focused. New! 
Citizens of Innsberg are obviously upset, not just by the bad traffic, but the convoy of nuclear waste crawling through town. So we have on the phone the mayor of Chuffield, Mr. Ditko Gutenberg, who is here to assure us that Chuffield is not trying to kill us with their horrible industrial filth. Isn't that right, Ditko? Could we pick up the base on this a bit? The city would love that. No, I mean on this interview, I really need to go to bed. It's 7.45 a.m. Uh, I'm Chuffield's night mayor. We have to do split shift because of a union thing. Do you want some c- coffee? I, I know a good place. Yeah, actually, it's a great local roastery just down the street. Only 45 minutes by car right now. I could run it. Look, I just want to assure people that nuclear waste is nothing more than nuclear fuel that's been used just a little bit. Citizens of Innsberg are in no danger whatsoever once we get this stuff through the city, off the Chumble floodplain, and ensconced safely within bedrock. And in the interim? You could hardly do better than telling the layabout citizens of your town to stay out of the way of our trucks and armed guards. Why are the trucks and guards even coming through Innsberg in the first place? Doesn't this convoy usually take another route? Well, as so many things, that was decided at the triannual gathering of the mayors. The dressage competition? No, the political junket. Look, Innsberg was the last to call not it, and that means this year you get the nuclear parade. We still don't have a mayor. Yeah, you were noticeably silent at the gathering, but it's not our problem. Well, you say there's no public health risk, but just for people's peace of mind, is there any way we can safely expedite this process? Well... Actually, yeah, for the next time this comes around, you might want to add a bypass between the uh, Crescent and your highway. Really speed things up. Oh, there's some seismic activity on my southern hemisphere. Oh, no, I thought Innsberg was seismically stable. I'm going to have to call the boys and tell them to shut down the convoy after they're done their breakfast break. What? No, 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 no. I, I'm just talking about my very ulcerated stomach. Well, I don't know. It's better to be safe anyway. Gonna have to commission some studies. Before you go, is there any way that we can have not made this worse? Well, you might have wanted to start widening your roads, because those trucks aren't gonna go anywhere until we can make sure this is perfectly safe. Regardless, you're gonna want to take this up with the day mayor. My shift is over. I need to get going. Did he just hang up on us? I, I don't think I like that guy. Yeah, uh, I don't think anybody does. I've seen his opinion polls, and he is without a doubt... Chuffield's worst nightmare. Well, why do they keep voting him back in? It's his third term. He's a recurring nightmare. Well, I didn't vote for him. Of course not. You don't live in Chuffield. We, we should get, get a mayor. mayor. Jinx, you owe me a Coke, which I'm not going to drink. Sounds like a plan. While I go get that from the vending machine, we go now to Derek, who is live on location at something Gus referred to as a very good story that we needed to cover. And I don't believe him, but we're here now. Hello, Derek. Hi, Graham. Hi, Alex. Boy, did you guys see those trucks going through town today? They were going so slow. Yes. Yes, we did. When do you think they're going to leave? Soon, I hope. I was able to walk alongside them for like four blocks. They're so warm. Are you feeling okay? Um, I'm feeling a little nauseous, but it could just be heat stroke. Uh, but that dovetails nicely into what I'm here doing today. I'm here at the Schliss Whistle. I'm here at the Schliss Whistle. Oh, son of a bitch. I'm here at Lorna's Healing Oasis, which is kind of a weird name because I don't see any camels or palm trees, uh, but I did see a raccoon throwing up some bones into a puddle. Lorna's what now? Actually, fine, whatever. Go for it. Oh, I'm going to need some milk of magnesia or maybe just some chalk. Alan, what I think you need is, in fact, to cleanse your energy. I can hear just from Derek's cell phone that you are projecting orange rays of unhappiness. I'm going to be projecting orange rays of something in a minute. So, Mitch, so Miss Lish, what, so Miss Lish, can I call you Lorna? You may call me Mother Medicine. Whatever you say, Dr. Mommy. Um, 
You are doing healing here in your backyard. What does that entail? Not just healing, Derek. I am realigning the chakras and correcting the energies of the downtrodden, the anxiety-ridden, and the toxin-filled. I had to have a realignment done on my Corvair once. Derek, I see that your energy is blue, which actually indicates confidence, strength, and a pleasant winter cream scent. That's my deodorant. It's called Frost Walrus. I got it from Mr. Hinckley. But unfortunately, I don't think all of the vulnerable listeners out there at Innsbruck have Derek's natural big tusk energy. And so the stresses of modern life and slow-moving atomic convoys are getting you down. Come to my healing oasis. I've built a Coleman sun tent for the rays of Mother Gaia to cleanse all 19 of your chakras, and then we will do a traditional medicine ceremony. Oh, cool. You put a tent in your backyard so you can go camping. My dad would let me do that when he was feeling thirsty, and he wanted me to leave the house for six hours. Dak, step inside the tent and feel the calming rays of energy wash over you. And now... Sit down on this wonderful Lapis Laluzi heating pad, which will correct your energy gently. Then, as you close your eyes and inhale the scent of sage and myrrh and raccoon dander, you can feel the gung-ho fatwa just wash over you, carrying all sadness and negative feelings away. My butt's sore. This cushion's really uncomfortable. That's just the feeling of all the toxins and negative energies being drawn out of your lower chakras. And also that you are sitting on a solid chunk of lapis lauzi. Okay, well, um, now what? Now we light the sacred candles imbued with the beeswax of no less than 98 happy, well-fed bees and the essential oils of honeysuckle and raccoon pellets. And then we burn this blessed sage bundle and you can feel the healing smoke enter your lungs. Dr. Mommy, this smells less like thanks Thanksgiving and more like false Dimitri safety meeting. Oh, whoops. My apologies, Derek. I am burning the wrong sacred bundle. So maybe don't inhale so much. Or do, because we're technically outside of city limits. I'm willing to trust a medical professional's advice. She's not a doctor. And now we simply close the flap of the tent and wrap ourselves in the sacred furs. All, of course, artificial because no animals were harmed in the making of this Coleman healing sun tent. And then we do traditional chants to release bad energy through sweat. Oh, I am feeling comfortably numb. You know the chants. Join me in the singing of this sacred song. Hello, hello, hello. Is anybody in there? As a talk radio show, that is all we are allowed to broadcast of that chant. It's more than we'd want to broadcast of that chant. Wow, guys, you got to come try this. This is kind of amazing. There is no pain. You are receding. A distant ship smoke on the... Horizon. Derek, I don't know how much more we're going to get out of this, so maybe you want to wrap up? I'm actually starting to feel kind of hot. Do you mind if I disrobe? The segment. Okay, um, well, gentle viewers, uh, Lorna's Healing Oasis is full of a bunch of rocks that you sit on. Um, it gets really warm, but kind of relaxing, and, uh, oh man, it looks like I, uh, I really tanned quickly today. That's unusual. Uh, Derek, you should probably take some iodine. I'm worried about your thyroid. Wow! How did you know? My doctor's been saying that to me for years. But man, I could really go for some chips. Gus, why did you send Derek to get hotboxed on radio? And irradiated! To be fair, he didn't have to take that route. Like a moth to the atomic flame. Well, that takes us up to the break, and I'm going to use that break to find Derek something relaxing and colorful to watch. When we come back, more news items. Innsberg has finally, formally abolished prohibition. Yeah, that was awkward. For our listeners who might have noticed that Innsberg is demonstrably not a dry town, everyone has certainly observed the abolishment, but the law was never actually filed. The papers were all signed, and jubilant town clerks took them down to the town hall to celebrate. 
and they were enshrined in a place of honor where they've lived in their frame on the wall between the pelt of Hepto the Seven-Legged Raccoon and that photo of Michael O'Leary butt-naked in the rum tunnels. Oh, is that where that photo ended up after the exhibition? Yes, the, the, the papers have now been removed, properly filed, and replaced with an electrostatic copy. The town hall is celebrating with half-priced Innsbury chokes. Innsbury chokes are always half price on Thursdays. Well, usually only between noon and four. Huh. Well, I might go down there and get some business shooters anyway. Smart. Stick around, folks. More Corpline right after this. You're listening to Corpline here on QWRPFM. Thanks again to our sponsor, Bill's Dills and Chilled Pills. Bill's opening another picklery and microbrewery somewhere in Innsburg. Bill's Dills and Chills Pills. Run for the hills and soothe all your ills. Welcome to Quasario's Astro News, your one-stop shop for all the latest news on deorbited satellites. Freedom Star 4 was launched in October of 1984 to broadcast the hit film Red Dawn into Soviet bloc states. It was the final of the Freedom Star satellites to be designed and assembled by Stonefruit Integrated Aerospace Industries of Savannah, Georgia. Freedom Star 4's rigid core bus is composed of an innovative metal composite hybrid housing a single reflector dish and mounting cutting edge polysilicon solar panels on outriggers. This gives Freedom Star 4 a classic full figured body. Its components, rich in succulent metals, should tantalize saddle lovers with an immodest bright white flare on re entry, followed by cheeky green and red burns due to computational and power system elements, finishing with a luscious and deeply satisfying plonk curve orange. Once its initial mission concluded in early 1985, Freedom Star 4 was leased by private concerns to broadcast copyright lapsed horror films. It is this final spooky mission which makes Freedom Star 4 our falling star of the week this Halloween. If you love space news, please consider supporting Operation Catch a Falling Star, the Quasario's Astro News community mission to Nemo Point, the oceanic pole of inaccessibility and spacecraft cemetery. Tune in to Quasario's Astro News ham radio station for live commentary, and be sure to join the conversation happening over on our BBS. Until next time, satellites like to be watched, and they don't care who sees them. open that. I'm waiting for a package. Fine. Hello? <laughs> what do you want? I seek vengeance. I seek redress. I seek crystals. Crystals. I have a receipt. This hasn't been crystals crystals for like three years. Oh. Then the curse is broken. I am free! Huh. Did that just happen, or is there a gas leak? No. I'm gonna go pick up my package from the depot tomorrow. I'll drive you. Okay. Um, hey, do we need that? Don't worry about it. Okay. Ian? Shh. What are you doing hiding under the desk? My boss is in the office. I can't let him find me. Uh-huh. I'll only be here for two, three weeks tops. Are you in trouble because we use the IBS cabin? No, no, it's nothing like that. I haven't been getting much done since you guys moved in, and I don't want him to know. I don't know how all this happened. It's because you spend all of your time here. What? No. Okay, I'm I'm glad we're all here, and and Ian also, even though he he didn't have to be here, and I explicitly told him not to be here. 
Don't you have to work during the day? Nah. Huh. Do I? Does anybody have a napkin? When did you get here? 7 a.m. I went from employee of the month 18 months running to this. And why is your solution to hide from your boss? What he can't see can't disappoint. Ian, no, you are a competent person. You're an IBS all-star. I believe in you. You do? Yes, I do. You deserve better than to hide under a desk for two weeks. You just have to come up with something to really wow your boss. Yeah. You also need to leave because you can't stay here. Thanks for the pep talk, James. I will do whatever it takes to get you out of this office. It's real nice of you. Sure. Uh, how long has this box been here? No. Nah. There's somebody clearly inside of it. Why did nobody open it? Because it says do not open until 2017. Yeah. Duh, James. Oh my god. Why are you in a box? Camouflage? What happened to talking to your boss? Your pep talk was too good. What? I overcommitted. I told him I was working on something big. Something so big I'd need extra time and resources to make sure it was ready for TAN Expo in Vancouver next month. Words just kept tumbling out of my mouth. Okay. And? Now I have to come up with something called Taupe 2000. Why? It sounded futuristic. I told him I brought in a new team of super consultants. Oh no. An outside group to give beige a new edge. To rebrand it for the millennial generation. You love the idea. No. 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 He's already allocated $25,000 to my department for the project. This from the man who refused to pay to have the walls repainted from a dusty puce to a buff khaki. N Wait, go on. Dusty puce is so 90s. It really dates the office. No. The money thing. Oh, what does it matter? My career is over. No, hang on. You're saying that if Loading Ready Run helps you come up with whatever Taupe 2000 is, then we can charge IBS a $25,000 consultation fee? Yeah, but... No buts! We'll do it. You will? How hard could it be? Then let's get to work! Oh no, no. This will not do. What? What's wrong? My boss is not going to believe you can bring a new paradigm to beige if you're dressed like this. But we're dressed for business. But you're not dressed for beige business. Or as we're calling it now, the beigeness. I'm literally wearing a beige jacket right now. Please, that's blanched almond. And you shouldn't be wearing ostentatious colors at work. It's a real distraction. Look, if this is going to work, you're going to have to try a lot harder to look the part. And by that, you mean live up to the elaborate fantasy that you invented? Who wants a beige over? It's like a makeover, but it's beige. Fine. Look amazing! Beach, what are you doing? The beige over took forever. I'm hungry. Well, put it away for two minutes. My job depends on this. Do you have any idea what Taupe 2000 is going to be yet? I figure we just wing it. Okay. The time to start winging it would be now. Oh, okay, do we have any non-committal buzzwords that we could throw around? Something that, like, means synergy, but also beige? We, we could portmanteau that. Be be beige or G. Sinner beige? Ah, I'd like to introduce you all to my boss, IBS's chief marketing officer, Mr. Arlo Dustfinger. Hi. So, Ian has told me your firm has been hard at work on a new strategy to bring IBS to a younger demographic. Did I say something funny? Well, 
What are you planning? Sinner beige. Oh, please. You don't need to use those corporate buzzwords here. Just give it to me in plain English. Uh... Uh, sorry about that. Cameron is our junior partner. Very, very junior. Very. Mostly just gets coffee. Thank you, Kathleen. Kathleen is our HR representative. Yeah! HR. Love hearing about feelings. Load me up with them feels. Right, so who's in charge of Taupe 2000? Well, what do you got for me? Tacos! Of course. Kids these days love taquerias. That's good. That's real good. That's good. Y yes. Yes. That's why Boutique Consulting Company Loading Ready Run is working on ways that we can rebrand beige for millennials. Tacos can be beige. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Emojis can be beige. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Quinoa can be beige. Mm, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Dank memes can be beige. <laughs> As you can see, we're still in the research phase. Well, fantastic. It seems like you've assembled a team that knows what it's doing. Ooh, snickerdoodle. Wow, this man's on fire. All right, I'll leave you to it. We'll have a reveal meeting next week. Did that work? Oh no. Then let's get to work. Why did that work? Why did that? Why did that work? Are you secretly marketing geniuses? We absolutely are not. Was well, my boss secretly an idiot? Probably not. What are we going to do? Ian, Ian, it's okay. We will figure something out. Okay, hold on. Who the hell is this? Isn't this glass box mime academy? I'm here for mime classes. You already failed. Get out. Oh. We have here is a simple case of overcommitment. That's bad, but it's not end of the world bad. All we need to do is figure out what Taupe 2000 is, make it, get our $25,000, and Ian gets to keep his job. Oh, yeah, okay, thanks James, I feel so much better now. Really? Because I feel worse. I feel hungry. Now you mention it, I'm also still feeling a bit peckish. Does anybody else need to tell me how they feel? Tired. Slightly itchy. I'm feeling a little peeved that nobody asked me before we decided to become consultants and invent a new beige. I... Uh, huh. Yeah, why didn't we do that? Were you busy? Not that busy. Ooh, I know. You would have said it was a bad idea and tried to stop us. No, I'm pretty sure Paul's going to tell us it's a bad idea either way. Well, obviously this was a bad idea. If it was a good idea, we wouldn't all be sitting around having a meeting to try and figure out what Taupe 2000 is. James, update on my feelings. I am feeling chastised. Okay, enough. Here's the plan. I'm going to go to the paint store, grab some samples, and mix some stuff up. Then we'll brainstorm some names, and we'll be done before dinner. Nice. I will come with you. What? That's a terrible idea. Taupe 2000 can't just be a slightly different color of paint. Dustfinger will see right through it. <sighs> nah. Paint's real thick, dude. Cameron's right. No man-made beige is gonna cut it. You can't just mix paint together. We could try mixing light, like a like a white light and a brown light, or two brown lights. Before we do anything, we should come up with a beige mood board. What are some things in nature that are beige? Dead leaves? 
certain clays? Dog poo left over when snowdrifts melt. Sign in front of the government office where you go to file for unemployment benefits. Okay, that was some good brainstorming. I guess. Does anybody else have any other ideas? Oh, we could summon a demon using the Necrobrownicon. Anyone have any real suggestions? Oh. Ooh! Okay, meeting adjourned, apparently. Uh, Cameron, Graham, get to work on your beige mood board. Kathleen, you're with me at the paint store. Paul, um, do some science, I guess, look at wavelengths. Nothing that messes with the fundamental laws of physics, though. So. I am almost offended that you felt the need to specify that. But I am mostly annoyed because that eliminates about half the things I was going to try. Oh, that's why we didn't ask you for help. Got there, got there. All right, that is everybody, except for Ian. Ian? All right, you just stay on the floor curled up in the fetal position then. Everybody meet back here in a couple hours. Here are some beiges Kathleen and I made. But the real je ne sais beige are the names. They all sound like they were invented by a baby boomer who was trying to appeal to millennials. Yeah, this one's called Avocado Eggs Benedict. And this one's Gentrification. And that one's Why Can't I Buy a House Too? That's my favorite. Okay. What's that one? Grande Extra Hot Pumpkin Soy Latte. And... That one? Gluten-free cupcake. That's amazing, James. We put a gluten-free cupcake on our mood board. That cupcake was really bad. Cool story, bro. Ian, did you come up with anything? Well, I found that I have an uncle who's an exterminator and he might need me to shoe bats. But I guess at this point my best bet is to just form a new identity. All I need for that is a dead child. Oh! For the social insurance number. Oh, good look! Beej and Alex are back. Hey, what'd you guys come up with? Huh? Huh? Oh, oh shit! shit! This is actually going better than I expected. Well, I liked our mood board, but however far you lowballed your expectations is probably more than we deserve. Hmm. Do you smell burning? Holy shit, there's white smoke coming from Paul's lab. He selected a new taupe! I call it Venta Beige. Oh. That sounds dangerous. It's the beigeous substance known to man. You see, normal pigments absorb most wavelengths of light and reflect others into your eyes, which we see as color. Take, for example, an apple. That only reflects wavelengths in the 700 nanometer range, which we interpret as red. Okay. But Venta Beige isn't a normal pigment. It is actually a matrix of fine mohair nanotubes that absorb 99.965% of visible light and only reflect wavelengths that are exactly 563 nanometers long. Cool. My god, that is pure beige. IBS researchers concluded that if we were able to isolate this specific wavelength, it would be the most soothing, calming beige imaginable. Exactly. Yeah, maybe too soothing. The longer I look at it, the more... Okay. I... become... I'm... just... Sure. Damn it, Paul, this is dangerous! It's just beige, James. But a purer, more powerful, narcotic version of beige than has ever been created before. It's... perfectly adequate. I have no strong feelings either way. Hey, how'd it go? Did Dustfinger like Vantabage? Did he buy it as Taupe 2000? Did he ever? He said it was competent. That, that, that doesn't sound good. No, no, in the beigeness, that's the best you can hope for. My career's going up from here. Yay! Yay! Hey! We, we did a thing. We did an actual thing. Oh yeah, your collage was super helpful for all the work I had to do. Well, 
maybe IBS can use some of the beige names we came up with for next season. Oh, oh no. With this, Arla says we've solved beige. That means no more beige expos, no more lookbooks, no more beige overs, no more going to Topeka for beige con or burn for Euro beige. Hold on, I got an email here. Oh. Oh no. Okay, it looks like because we've solved beige, we no longer need a marketing department. Or an Ian. I've been let go. What? Don't you get any credit for coming up with Tope 2000? Oh no. The whole company's being shut down. Really? According to this, Tope 2000's been reclassified as a weapon of mass destruction. What? After all that work I put into the collage, you are the one who gets to be classified as an international war criminal? Why do I even bother? Oh, what remains of IBS is a wholly owned subsidiary of Lockheed Martin. What? And they won't return my calls. Well, I guess my last act as a representative of IBS is to give me this check for $25,000. Rent's due for the year. Beach, that check is made out to us. Right, right, right. If uh, you could yeah. just... And then get it to you Sure. Oh, great. Beach might not be a very good businessman. Once again, the work of scientists and artists has been co-opted by the military-industrial complex. But we did get $25,000 for making Vanta Beige, so... Eh. Yeah, that's pretty good. Too bad it costs $200,000 to develop. What?! Oh, by the way, I have some receipts. Hi, my name is Dan, and I know how hard it is trying to find somebody. Trust me, I've used all the usual dating services and nothing has worked. Sometimes I've thought about giving up entirely, but I'm going out tonight. Just because I can't find my perfect match doesn't mean I have to be alone. That's why I'm using third wheel dating. Peter, Marie, hi. So nice to meet you. If you've put in the effort and you're still alone, third wheel dating can help you. You can go out, meet interesting people, and participate in all the romantic trappings of the relationship you so deeply desire, all without the one-on-one -on -one interactions you keep screwing up. I've been rejected so many times, I didn't think my standards could get any lower. Even the convicted murderer I was sending erotic jailhouse letters to said I was moving too fast. But thanks to third wheel dating, I don't have to wait for 28 years with good behavior. I can go out, tonight. Just because others have passed on you doesn't mean you have to let life pass you by. Third Wheel Dating can help you get close, but not too close, to achieving your dream. Wondering if Third Wheel Dating is right for you? Our service is for everyone in all kinds of relationships, and everyone who wants to watch all kinds of relationships. I just really want to see two boys making out. We wanted someone to watch. I'll just take what I can get. My mom cut off the internet after she found and read my Sesame Street slash fic. But thanks to third wheel dating, I don't need the internet anymore. I can watch people having sex anytime I want. We need to no, go. No, no, it's okay. Big Bird's got you now. Third Wheel Dating has been amazing for our relationship. I appreciate Peter so much more now that I know what some of my alternatives are. For me, the best part is knowing that even if your partner is kind of a bitchy ice queen, you could be doing so much worse. And I'd take adequate foreplay list sex with you over what Dan could offer me any day. Do you guys got any Mountain Dew? <laughs> <laughs> So sign up today and experience the excitement of a relationship. The adventure of a relationship. And the intimacy of a relationship. Without any of the drawbacks of a relationship. 
Thanks, third wheel dating. My boobies burn for you. <laughs> can I wake up? Can I wipe off his makeup now? Yes. Have you ever been given or trusted with an incredibly valuable and expensive piece of equipment and you're immediately tempted to just do the most destructive thing imaginable to it or with it? I want to see if I can hammer throw this into a passing vehicle, and I don't know why. We're at N Cafe. <laughs> yeah. We told them we'd take a couple minutes of this for this outside uh, table that they're not using. Uh, and shoot a thing, and they were kind enough to let us do that, as long as their name was not in shot. So that's positive. Which, if we had used the audio from that last shot, I wouldn't want my name, my brand's name, no. over any single inch of what we just filmed. <laughs> any inch. I got the idea from this video, uh, from a conversation that me and my friend Lindsay were having. Lindsay, you may recognize as being in a few Loading Ready Run videos and most recently in a feed dump. And we saw two people at Gen Con talking to one another and it was a girl talking to a guy and she was saying, no way, I'm the third wheel too. And we're like, aw, genuine connection's been established. If only there was some way for third wheels to meet each other. And uh, after workshopping the idea of a third wheel dating service for a while, uh, Lindsay, I believe, suggested that it would be funnier if it was actually a dating service for people who wanted to find third wheels. And then we did about five minutes of intensive world building, aka making each other laugh. And then uh, I told Graham about this and he said, write that down in the script ideas folder. And then I got back here and I told everybody about it and uh, we all threw out some ideas and this script was born. How do we hold hands? Like, like that. that. What I like about this script is uh, everyone is awful. Ah, uh, well, actually, probably the gay couple is fine. Like, they're probably the nicest people in this script. Uh, but literally everybody here is weird. As it should be. Like, who signs up for this if you're not kind of weird, right? It's like 11th grade all over again. <laughs> Boys. Fujoshi. Boys. <laughs> <laughs> One guy doing all the fucking work with six people watching. I'm holding something! I'm doing a super low angle shot of James playing golf. So that it's very dynamic and also you can't see that he is not on a golf course. I'm not on a golf course. Holy shit. <laughs> so I was trying to make myself look unappealing. But I think I might just look like an extra in a Grimes video right now. <laughs> <laughs> we get Kim laughing. You do, <laughs> kind of. Here's a fun thing, Loading Ready Run fans. I have very, very bushy eyebrows naturally. They don't come this close well, together. You did once. Oh yeah, I don't think they maybe, grow back. Maybe as a child you used to have bushy eyebrows. Yeah, I've been plucking my eyebrows since I was like 13 because they are they look like this, un, unaided, I guess. But I don't think they would Not grow like back that. like this anymore. Not that bad. I would just like to point out, bushy eyebrows are awesome. <laughs> They're the best Unbent. thing ever. And then I put on some blush, because that's pretty, and red lipstick, because that's pretty. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And parachute chains. Well, these are comfortable. I'm eating the prop for it and Gray mailed at me. Very cool. <laughs> Look how Beach is just KO. It's just. It's very matter of fact. Stop being mean. I'm not doing anything wrong. You're being awfully mean. Oh. Can you hold my popcorn? I 
can watch people having sex anytime I want. We we need to go. No, 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 it's okay. Big Bird's got you. Who's going for a field? What was that? I'm just gonna go in for a field. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm probably, I'm, that's probably too much. <laughs> I just dial this back. I was like, I could probably grow Beach's titty, but Heather might not be my friend anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay if you don't want to be friends again. No, <laughs> this is fun, actually. Yes. Uh -oh. This is really weird. <laughs> <laughs> I've come for your penises. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> I'm gonna hack them all up, put them on my armoire. <laughs>
Because she it, didn't compel no. Hansel and Gretel to get into the oven. She was just like, oh yes, please, into the oven. And they went, we sure are dumb, and got on in. We don't have to do that. We can just eat the centerpiece. Kim, does Hansel and Gretel end with the kids dying? Because in the versions I was read as a child and then read myself as a child, I don't remember them ever dying. I don't actually remember. I I want to say that they were tricked into the oven and then somehow made an escape with like breadcrumbs behind them. I was just going based on the notion that every sort of nursery rhyme that we know of had an original version that was awful. So I assume, Way darker. Yeah. I assume that in the original, original yeah. story, Hansel and Gretel died horribly in an oven and it was some sort of cautionary tale about don't go into the woods or don't take yeah, candy from strangers. Yeah, the witches killed thousands of kids over the years. Yeah, but mm. yes, I've, I've read the same version you have where they leave the trail of breadcrumbs and kick the witch into the oven and everything and we could certainly do that. Oh yeah. I mean, the only reason I brought it up was because I was a little confused that maybe something was wrong with my childhood and that I was misremembering this whole thing. It wasn't really so much to poke a hole in the in the story you guys are assembling for You're yourself. Like, did my parents edit every nursery rhyme that I had read to yeah. me? Yeah, yeah. Like, like, you can very easily imagine a situation where your parents are like flipping through this like very brightly colored children's story and slowly going pale as they're like, holy hell, she's going to eat the children. Of course, she eats the children. Yeah. Uh, and then they leave a trail of breadcrumbs behind them and the witch falls in the oven and they escape. Yeah, yeah. I bet. Like, like my parents would be sitting there and say, and then uh, the little boy escaped from the the man chasing him with an axe, and the man froze to death in the when the winter, and everyone else got out safe at the end. Even if we do have a happy ending to both of these stories, right? You know, say the Shining and 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 the Hansel and Gretel one. I'd rather, I'd still rather be in our house. I'd still rather be surrounded by candy than being chased by a lunatic axe murder. Even if we get away, even if there is a quote unquote happy ending, I, I'd rather, I like my atmosphere better than your atmosphere. Mm. I mean, um, if it's accessible yeah, it's... by bus, then certainly the winter hasn't set in yet. Oh, we yeah. walked here. That's uh huh. True. What now? We're just in a very creepy supernatural environment, but it hasn't turned us yet because we've only been there maybe like two or three hours. And overnight, we're going to be like, ah, oh, it was good. I'm just going to go outside and catch the 730 bus back to wherever the hell it was I meant to go. Yeah, nice feather bed. It's a luxury resort. I'm assuming its Yelp reviews are pretty strong, at least, you know, during the season. I can go down to the, go down to the lounge and play piano by myself, you know, like maybe Scatman comes out and we have a song together. I'm just picturing the scene where the, the elevator doors open, there's blood everywhere, and Cam's just kind of like, okay. Old content. What you got for me now, Hotel? This is from the 70s. I've seen animated GIFs that were worse than this. I'm now imagining a similar scene in our cabin, but not, but it's just jam. What, like the doors open and just a flood of jam? Why jam? Since it's a red viscous fluid, Serge. I'm trying to connect it to the blood. Like what comes out of the elevator in The Shining. Yeah. Yeah. That you described. In that vision that a character has at well, one point. Well, I, I, thought, I thought specifically with jam, there was like some jam meme I didn't get. You know, oh. we're talking about bikes or new things. I'm like, I don't know about the jam. Is this the new hot thing in the gifts that I don't know about? That's, no, that's just, fair. When I'm just talking about the cabin, I thought he meant the cabin out the mountain we stay at every year. Like oh. suddenly moths are cool. I yeah. thought maybe jam was cool and I missed it. Yeah, that moth thing came out of nowhere. Didn't right? It? Thank you. Yeah. I just like jam. I don't well, now I'm hungry, thanks. No, you're welcome. At least we're in a candy cabin, we can just eat the walls. Hi, yeah. wouldn't you get a stomach ache? Like, I, I try my hardest to eat lots of chocolate. Mm. And I can only go so far before I finally, like, so, something in my, in my body registers and said, you are killing yourself. And by extension, me, which is myself, which is my own body. And so I have to think that it's like, you, at a certain point, you get sick of eating, like, like, wafers off the walls and stuff. And it's like, you know, do you have anything here that's like, do you have, like, anything added to spinach? One advantage, though, is the witch has never been proactive in her attempt to eat the children. It's always trying to coax them and stuff like that. So we've got lots of time. You can have a little nibble and then just wait till you feel better and nibble again. And then she'll come up and she'll be like, oh, you want to get in the oven? You just play dumb because we know what her game. We're just like... I don't get it. I know I'm 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 warm right now. Give me a second. Let me have a little bite, and then maybe when I'm I'm colder, I'll come closer. You have to keep in mind, uh, Beach, that these are like shitty 18th century European sweets. These are people who looked at Turkish delight and were like, "This is the greatest stuff that has ever existed the, and never will exist." The this pinnacle. is the ultimate confection. My God, how do they get all this rose water into this weird jelly? I know. Like, 
We've been working on sweets in the 21st century like it's the cure for cancer. These have been subjected to the most intense scrutiny and research imaginable. Yeah, we have 30 different words for sugar. Yeah, I mean, this is, yeah, I, this is gonna taste like wood. Mm. It's not an all-you-can-eat buffet. You can kind of take your time here, Beach. And it wasn't until I was at a buffet in Las Vegas that I realized just how much dessert I could eat in a sitting. And it turns out, it's a lot. I surprised myself by having a lot of difficulty getting value off of buffets. So I really feel that the Overlook Hotel is really more suited to my needs here. To be murdered by an axe-wielding maniac? Again, we don't know if he's shown up yet. <laughs> and honestly, that guy got outwitted by a seven-year-old. Yeah. I think, I think we can handle it. Yeah, that kid ran through a maze in the winter and, and outran a, a, a grown man who should clearly know how to find his way through. He's got an axe and he can't find his way through a maze made of trees. Honestly, if that was a wow boss fight, you would want your money back on that expansion. You'd be like, man, this guy's pathing sucks. All we have to do is get a hunter to kite him. Congratulations for your flawless logic. And in fact, discovering the common thread between these two prompts is these are both villains that can be outwitted by children. Yes. Yeah. It only took four of us. I mean, you still haven't nailed the details of Hansel and Gretel. Well, like the thing is, the witch is kind of blind. So she sticks oh. Hansel in a cage, and then he like sticks the bone of another child out when she wants to test how fat he is by like having him stick his finger out there. And then she's like, oh, too thin to eat. And this goes on for weeks, and he's getting fatter and fatter. And eventually she's like, ah, screw it, I'm gonna put you in my oven anyhow. And then it's Gretel who actually outwits her by pretending to not know how an oven works. So when the witch bends over to show it, then she just like gives her a good old boot to the ass and jams her in the oven. And they seal her in the oven, and she burns to death and they hear her screams as they run away. Could you imagine being that witch and just having to deal with these idiot children for so long that you finally just like, when Hansel and Gretel come along and Gretel doesn't know how to use a stove, you're not like, the hell is wrong with you? You never learned how to use a stove? You're like, of course, idiot children are too stupid to learn how to use the stove. And you just take that as given because you've been conditioned by all these idiot children you've been eating that kids are too dumb. You have to do it all yourself. Mm. That's sad. I also like that Graham's solution wasn't to outsmart the witch, but just to go, just give a straight Donnybrook or something there. No, I just mean she can't force us into the oven. If she tries something, we could like, I don't know, gently tie her to a chair. He's showing an awful lot of compassion for this witch. And actually, now that I'm saying it, this sounds a little ridiculous. What about this old crazy woman living in the woods makes her a witch? I, do, do, would you want us to not give her? I'll fucking kill her if you want me to. <laughs> I'm just more like, this is, this is an old woman who's clearly out of her mind. Uh, well, yeah, she built a house out of cake. Exactly. Mm -hmm. She has a working oven, and, and, and but I don't think that that, like, the fact that she's built a home out of cake, her does not qualify her to be a witch. There's nothing inherently magical about that. I wasn't just going to kick her frosty door in and be like, all right, granny, trick or treat. Hey, trick or treat, we're going to tie you down. I, you know, I was going to be like, yo, can we stay here? And then if she's like, sure, why don't you just hop into this conspicuous oven at that point to be like, no. And if she's like, I'm gonna try to force you to your death somehow, then I'll fight back. Her little bird arms pushing against Proportional you. Proportional response. That's yeah. fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're not leading with murder here, Beach. No, that's fair. You never lead with murder. You gotta keep that in the back pocket. Yes, thank you. Just that's, in case. That's plan B. Or M. Yeah. For murder. So what we've decided on is that Serge and Graham are good at planning, and that uh, Beige and Cameron uh, have seen too much shit on the internet and aren't scared by anything. Uh, so I'm going to give you guys nine points mm -hmm. for your witch skills, and I'm going to give you guys seven points for your appreciation of the fine pattern on the Overlook Hotel's carpets. They're tessellated bacteriophages. Well, I'm glad we have all learned that. I feel like we're a little bit smarter, which is good news. And another good news, good news! The Christmas creep is worse than ever and the Canadian government is sick of it. In an attempt to keep Yuletide festivities in December where they belong, Justin Trudeau has personally asked you to create a new holiday to be held in November. So what are we going to be celebrating? Team Surgeon Graham's friendship is like a latte that is not very good. It's perfect. The new Canadian holiday in November mm -hmm. is Thanksgiving. Now, you may be saying, but wait, Canadians already have Thanksgiving in October, and Americans have Thanksgiving in November, and we have to keep reminding them about it. Yeah. Yes. So this is now Canadian Thanksgiving in November. 
bonuses. Double Thanksgiving. Yeah. Now, not only do we have ours earlier in the year, and ours is better because it's a harvest festival and not about this like mythical picnic that the pilgrims and the First Nations supposedly had. Yeah. Double the turkey. Love turkey. Okay. And we just get to lord it over the Americans that it's like, oh, yeah, no, Thanksgiving? Yeah, we have two of those. Yeah. Yeah. And I now like we that. have one also in November that's now directly competing with theirs that's just, it's just better. I, I'm i spitballing here. Okay. Okay. Let's wrap. But uh, in the same vein as Canadian Thanksgiving coming a month before the American Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. then, uh, and really the rest of the world's Thanksgiving, um, why don't we do Canadian Christmas <gasps> in November before Christmas as is recognized? Like an early ablate of Christmas. Yes. To like, absorb all the heat of all the shit that we have to deal with to blow that off before actual Christmas happens. Like a, a dike against the Yuletide. Yeah. Yeah. And it'd be like Canadian Christmas, or Canimus for short. Mm. At the risk of being rude and poking holes in your argument, your solution to reducing the Christmas creep ha has been to move the goalposts of Christmas so that now the the region of time consumed by the Christmas creep is just valid because it's also for Christmas. That's correct, yes. Does, yes. Does cannabis have different traditions than Christmas? Oh. Different foods? I feel it should have the identical ones. Yeah, like, I, it, it actually should be, yeah, it should be everything that we're used to, and then it should be a hard cutoff uh, featured in media. Mm. Is that we basically make an agreement that all Canadian media, CBC, everybody else just stops talking about Christmas. And, say, and says that, okay, Canimus is when we celebrate the birth of Jesus, but now we're celebrating it closer to the time in which he would have actually been born, so there we've done better already. Mm. And uh, when you're done doing that, uh, cut that off. We're done. Yeah, it's just over. So if I'm shown two pictures of Canimus and Christmas, interior, so weather doesn't matter, two pictures of the, the, the evening feast... I shouldn't be able to tell them apart. I feel like maybe we could scale everything down by like maybe forty percent. Instead of instead of a, a, a turkey, you would have like maybe a roast chicken, and there would be a solid like twenty buck limit. Well, that's pretty good gifts. because then it would it would have this this feeling of um, you know we're doing this, we're getting together in a time of the year that's probably easier for people to deal with. Uh, so so we're all having this meeting, we're uh, like getting together, having a feast, and it's good. Mm -hmm. um, but it isn't like. We're not trying to make it the most special thing. So there's not a lot riding on this. Yeah. You fuck up a chicken, it's like, well, I'll just go to the store and buy another one. It'll be fine. You're yeah. describing a company Christmas party. You're not, descri not, not describing a holiday. No, but with all the warmth of, you know, having yeah. your family together. But you know? you're, like, you're saying, like, less parties, less gifts, less expectations. That is the holiday Christmas party. Yeah, but that's the Christmas I want to leave. Is, is I, I want to have a Christmas that's like, when, when I show up to it, I feel like, God, I'm glad this didn't take a lot of effort on my part. Yeah. Does the name sound like cannabis on purpose? Yes. Cool. Thanks for noticing. Yeah. All right. What do you think the tree's made out of? That's that... why this should be a chill night for all. Yeah. Holy that holy that would make the pictures look a little different. A little different. Everyone's like, yeah. got little like blurrier eyes. You know, just <laughs> you can get cameras correct for that now. Oh, that's good. Oh, okay. Good. 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 Yeah. So the iPhone I mean, has a way to take that out. Oh my god. Yeah. If the tree is forty percent smaller, you don't know that. Notice that it's just an actual bud. <laughs> now. So I'm, I mean, I really like this idea of cannabis and I like this idea of like smaller gifts and, you know, Many people less... enjoy cannabis, yes. Yeah. You know, Recreationally. Like, um, and, Legally now here. But what's weird is that it's like, that I'm still not, I'm, okay, I'm still not sold on uh, second Canadian Thanksgiving. So when is it? Uh, the exact same day as American Thanksgiving. Oh. Yeah. It yeah. floats. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I see. And then in that way, we also solve the main thing, which is less hours and days dedicated to Christmas, instead of extending and doubling the, that holiday season, we actively push back by just hijacking their holiday and making it better by making it Canadian. And Canadian retailers have already started to try and make Black Friday a thing in yeah. Canada, which I loathe, but I can't stop them. So we're having this awful retail fuckscape of Black Friday without the, the, the joy of Turkey. Of, of mm. turkey and stuffing and potatoes and all that yeah. good stuff the day beforehand or the, the weekend. It's 
divorced from that. So at least we can add that onto it. And the best part about Canadian Thanksgiving is that we get to say, well, you see, ours is all different and fancy and we're a unique thing from yours. And so now we get to do that more. We just go, yes, well, we had one last month, but now we're having another one today. Yeah. Okay, sounds good. I want to twiddle the knobs. Do you mind if I twiddle your knobs? Please, Beach, twiddle my knobs. Okay. Um, so Canadian Thanksgiving always lines up with uh, Columbus Day in the States. It's the second Monday of October. What if on American Thanksgiving, Canadian Thanksgiving is all about celebrating indigenous people? Ooh. Ooh. As a bit of a thumb in the eye to be like, you celebrate a guy who just massacred a whole bunch of people. We're going to celebrate the fact that we know we need to do better. I love that, A, we get to finally be like, no, we are having the same holiday the same day as you so that no one gets any work done. And B, by the way, you know, this facade that you've put on about, like, yes, well, you see, the pilgrims came and had a lovely turkey dinner with all the happy natives, and it was great. We get to be like, no, nah, no, nah, that wasn't what happened. And also, check out what, check out our, our thing. Yeah, a day, a day of truth and reconciliation. Yeah. Well, and you have, like, a feast that is, like, seasonal and local, mm -hmm. right? Rather than, like, whatever it is the Americans have decided that we eat on Thanksgiving. Yeah. But also give people, I think, a reason to travel. And go see their family in other locations. Oh, that try out I, the local cuisine. Yeah, I have I have Albertan family, and if they were at all home during November, I would might be like, well, then maybe I'll go home for Thanksgiving and I'll have buffalo, you know, you know, or maybe I'll stay here and I'll enjoy, you know, the fruits of the West Coast. Or you could go visit them in Phoenix. Yeah, I mean, don't where they're having Thanksgiving because it's America. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I guess you would have Taco Bell. Yeah. All right, so what we've all decided here is that we've all actually come up with a very good idea yeah. that should probably be implemented, but is not going to happen because this is, of course, a made-up internet panel show uh, where nothing we say matters and has no consequence, just like the points and the scoring and whoever wins this show. So I'm going to give you all one trillion, 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 trillion points. Okay. So... so we have one trillion, 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 and nine. Yeah. And you had one trillion, 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 and seven. Which, when you're measuring them on a on a cosmic scale, are practically the same score. Yeah, practically say, the same, but I, we are two better. Yeah, well, I'd say, like, at that point, though, you're getting into margins of error. So, you know, I'm going to say that, uh, like, like many of the First Nations people who have not been treated very well in Canada, everyone loses... Thank you for such an uplifting uh, episode of The Panelists. Please come back next week. Bye! Welcome to Pocket Plains, Philadelphia, where our motto is, we're your best choice because we're your only choice. I need to get to Goose Bay. There's a major search and rescue operation going on there, and I've got to help out the local firemen. Okay, let me just... Me too! I need to get to Goose Bay ASAP. They need more paramedics. Same here. I have this crate of medical supplies. Ditto for me. What? I have to get to Goose Bay as soon as possible. For the search and rescue? Yes, it's imperative. Why? For, uh... Moral support of the community? Goose Bay is in Canada. Oh, yeah, but, uh, everyone loves Uncle Sam. Yeah, but why are you going? I want you to keep your spirit up, you wacky Canadians. Oh, hi, Uncle Simus. As a professional Japanese mascot impersonator, it's absolutely critical that I get to Goose Bay on the double. What? You're kidding Come me. Come on. Why? Ah, uh, because... Moral support. Moral support, yeah. Look, there are wildfires raging round the clock up there, so it's very... Im Thank goodness I didn't miss the flight. Not another I one. I don't believe this. You interrupted him. As a 1900s-era judge, complete with powdered wig, it is my duty to supply the good citizens of Goose Bay with an ongoing supply of stuffy courtroom humor. You are not getting on this plane. Overruled.
<laughs> Look, you three, people could be very seriously hurt if I don't get up there and help. What good is being well if no one can lead you in a stirring round of the Star Spangled Banner? All right, well, what good well, is the Star Spangled Banner if you're freezing to death on the Canadian planet? I mean, if you get a hatch on the only thing I want to use it for is tourniquet. Hey! Hey! Can I ask all three of you a question? What's up? I love it. Are you guys paying in coins or bucks? Bucks. Bucks, of course. All rise for bucks. Welcome aboard. Beach, what the shit is going on with the building? Oh, the old IBS space is getting renovated. Into what? Into whatever the new tenants need. They're tearing down walls, they're putting up new walls, they're tearing those walls down again because someone was holding the plans upside down. You know, standard construction stuff. Well, how long is this going to be going on for? Oh, while well, yet. They're putting up a lot of walls. Who needs that many walls? Well, I rented the top half of the IBS space to an art collective, and now that all my tenants are non-profits, I qualify for some sweet tax breaks. Well, what about us? Aren't you a non-profit? No, we're just not profit. Oh, well then you need to leave. What? Well, not right away, but I mean ideally before the fourth quarter ends. I, okay, well we have until December at least. Yeah, no rush. I'm surprised he was even able to rent out the space upstairs. Most people are kind of put off by sharing a building with a Primal Scream therapy group. Yeah, haha, ha, I'll tell Alex to rein it in. No, I mean the actual Primal Scream therapy group that I rented the rest of the first floor to. <laughs> Who's that? Airhorn Circle. It's like a drum circle, but with air horns. Why? That's what they do so they don't scream themselves out. Okay. Don't worry. It's only every Tuesday and Thursday, and alternate Fridays and Mondays. Oh, and the third Saturday of every month. It's Wednesday. Huh, well, I guess Wednesdays too. Bede, we need a new moon base. Yeah, wow, now that you mention it. Modern, renovated office space with access via one of Victoria's most haunted alleyways. Haunted as in there's a lot of tourism activity, or haunted as in there's a series of gruesome murders? Google says the latter. Next. For lease, open concept co-working space below Heritage Boiler Room. Appreciate the underside of historic floorboards from cozy five-foot ceilings. So it's a crawl space. Please, Paul, it's a crawl space with architectural significance. Next. Oh, 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 for lease. 2,200 square foot professional office space located on two major bus routes, 10 foot ceilings, plenty of natural light, charming location. Wow, that sounds really good. Put it on the list. Oh, it's partially underwater. What does that mean? Like it has portholes or it's down by the dock? No, more like a massive failure of the sewage main. Oh. Next. But the landlord will supply sub pumps and provide mildew resistant wall coverings. Next. Keep it 2,200 square feet. Keep looking. I uh, found another crawl space. Does it have architectural significance? No. I think I should start using the internet. Okay, we need to move ASAP. Does anyone have any suggestions? Kill the air horn choir. Kill the... Wait, the choir? Yeah, that's why they're practicing on Sundays now, too. It's because they have a recital coming up, but not if we kill them first! And any anybody else? Lie down and wait for death? Summon a wizard. Do you know any wizards? Of course not. That's why we have to summon one. Paul? Well, I could invent some terrible machine. No. Or pull one out of storage? Well, that's the best suggestion so far, which is... Not great. James, you've been looking for new spaces. Any luck with that? Uh, I found 1,800 square feet over on 9th Street. It's cheap and we can move in right away. Well, hot damn, why didn't you tell me? It's not ideal. What's wrong with it? There's a lot of natural light. Which means? There are a few holes in the wall. Very small, like 9 millimeter maximum. 
mostly random pattern, but some pretty solid groupings. Uh, but only the back half of the building is condemned. James, if we wanted to move to a condemned building, we could just go back to the old moon base. Uh, could we move back to the old moon base? I'm very allergic to raccoons. No, beads the old, old moon base. It got torn down. Why? Because it was condemned. Huh. What's there now? A brand new building owned by Brencorp Investments. Oh, hey, that's me. Beach, can we move into this new building? Well, I don't know. I mean, I gotta check your credit, and then I gotta talk to your current landlord. Are you serious? Very serious. This is how this works, Graham. I have a business to run. You forgot you owned an entire building. I'm a busy guy, and I can't be expected to know all the buildings I may or may not own all over town. You've been whittling a broom handle for the last four hours. And I've made very little progress. Guys, did, did I just find us a new moon base? Oh, well, it's fine. <gasps> Ian! You're amazing! <laughs> Thank you! You don't even work here! I don't? Good job on these renovations so far. I'm glad I summoned you. Not a problem at all. You think you're gonna be done with the washroom today? I'm a wizard, not a magician. That's just one other reason why the crab is one of the ocean's most majestic creatures. Well, that's all the time we have today on Time for Crab. Join us next week when we'll be looking at more footage of crabs. But until next time, if you've got time to gab, you've got time for crab. Time for Crab is brought to you by the generous support of the Foundation for Carcinization Edutainment and viewers like you. Tonight on CFUT, we're putting relationships on the line for your amusement with Friend or Pretend. Get your pens and pencils ready to draw along with Art Instructions, Art Instruction. Hank Bastard is back on the hunt in a chilling episode of Undetermined Sightings, and we hear several opinions about municipal development on Local Mix. But first, grab your rakes, it's time for Gardening with Greg. We need trees, we need trees, we need trees, Greg, no matter how much you hate doing this every year, you can't just cut down... Oh, hi. Guess we're back. Thanks for the heads up, Kale. Welcome back to Gardening with Greg. I'm just taking care of the annual leaf problem. It's kind of endless this time of year, isn't it? It's, uh, yeah. You know, I, I once tied a lawnmower to a vacuum cleaner and, uh, yeah, it got righteously clogged with dog leavings. Fertilized the hell out of the lawn, though, up until it caught fire. Anyway, you know how some trees just have apples? A good way to tell if a tree makes apples is if there are apples on the ground. Yeah, like my Nana always said, the apple falls from the tree. She was an idiot. Look, uh, yeah, Rick's not going to help you much with these apples. Which is fine because, frankly, you want to just leave them on the ground until they're ready. Once the birds can't fly anymore, but uh, they're still alive, that's important. That's when you know they've banked up all their happy juice and it's time to get funky. Like I've always said, ground fermented apples are nature's accelerator pedal to your court date. So let's just fuck. 
you're invited to the grand opening of Dulcimer Warehouse's brand new Marlowe Avenue location. Celebrate with up to 70% off new instruments and 40% off every pre-owned Dulcimer, Zither, and Cordophone we have in stock. Load up on strings, pegs, hammers, nut oil, and more with our door crasher specials and keep your kids busy with the antics of Tiddles the Clown. Plus, every purchase enters you into a draw for the new AX Ultra Goose, the instrument Tetracord magazine called a terrifying development in the field of electric zithers. Shop in two convenient locations or online at www.dulcimerwarehouse.blogspot.com. Dulcimer Warehouse, where you get dulcim more bang for your buck. Hello, I'm Bruce Waffle, and welcome to Friend or Pretend, the show where we pit pairs of partners head to head to head to head to head to head, to head and find out if they really are the good friends they think they are. Let's meet our trio of teams today. First up, Hephaestus Newman and Rocco, the Love Doctors. We've got this in the bag. We spent a career of helping people get along. Yeah, fully licensed. I don't know that that's accurate. Team number two, Jerry and Susan from Fitspot. I'm Jerry. I'm Susan. And team number three, Bacon Rothersworth and Windix 1-7 with extended RAM bank. Look beside me. This is the future of all partner-based quiz games. Ecstatic response. Thank you, Waffle Sir. Well, it's a, it's a pleasure to have you here, too. Now, do I call you Lindex117 with extended RAM bank? Ha, 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 no. You can just call me Lindex. All my friends do. Well, just bacon. All my friends. We've been studying the algorithm of the entire game show. We have watched 500 episodes. Well, give or take. Everyone was agony. Well, that sounds like a terrific amount of preparation. We wanted to be sure that people saw that our relationship was more than just physical. But to be clear, our relationship is extremely physical. Rawr. It's a pleasure to have all six of you with us here today. Before the show, we asked members of each team to secretly write down answers to questions, and now we're going to see if their friends give the same answer. So... Question number one to you, Rocco. What is Hephaestus's favorite place to go out for dinner? Oh, yeah, he, he always loves going to Pinky's Gentleman Club and Steak Rail. Okay, let's see. Hephaestus's answer. Dolph's Deli on 3rd. We, we get sandwiches there every day. You order the Cleveland Reamer. Yeah, but the question was dinner, which clearly means supper and not lunch. We're splitting hairs. <sighs> We'll pick it up in the next one. Well, I'm afraid no points there, but love a good reamer. Jerry, what did Susan say? Oh, that's an easy one. Favorite place to have dinner is Mom and Pop Papadopoulos Greek Shop right around the corner from our studio. All right, Susan, what did you write down? Mom and Pop Papadopoulos is Greek Shop. I've been there myself. Love their tzatziki. Bacon. Most local restaurants have forbidden our custom, so I will say... The food court, specifically the table, within 25 feet of the outlet where the custodian lets Bacon plug in my extension cord. That's quite a specific answer. Let's see what Bacon said. Look at my card. That is correct. Right by the radio shack. Terrific. Well, points for you two. Now, question number two. If your friend could be any internal organ, which one would they be? Rocco. Clearly, given the profession we're in, he's going to pick the gonads. Makes sense to me, I suppose. Hephaestus, what's your answer? You love touching skin. You're right, I do. Yes. Yeah, you like skin, but it's skins, again, like internal. The, the skin on the inside is alive. The stuff on the outside, that's the dead stuff. Oh, uh, yeah. You make a good point. Oh, uh, what a shame. No love for gonads. Jerry, what does Susan say? Wow, that's a tough one. There are so many great internal organs. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I'm going to have to say the core. Yeah! <sighs> well, congratulations. You've both misunderstood the question in the same way. Judges, we're going to give it to you. Yeah! 
All right, then. Team number three, Lindex, what organ do you think bacon would most like to be? There are 78 organs in the human body, so the odds are not on my side. I will guess and say the descending colon. All right, that's a guess for descending colon. Bacon, what did you say? Well, Waffle, despite the fact that we've watched many episodes together, Lindex got it wrong. I chose modem. Oh no, you chose a machine organ and I went with a soft flesh one. What a humorous misunderstanding. <laughs> humorous? I did not give you the ability to pun. Bones are not organs. That was not a pun. All right, well, now it's time for round two, where the points have been trebled, thereby making round one utterly irrelevant. And we've switched which friend is writing their answers down in advance. First question, what is something your friend used to like and now doesn't like as much? Hephaestus, what do you think Rocco's answer is? Well, I was going to say the Cleveland Reamer, but now I'm beginning to rethink strip clubs. All right, so I think we're going with Pinky's Gentleman's Club and Steak Rail. Rocco, what do you say? Why didn't you say the deli? It's your card. You handed it to me. <sighs> the next question. Well, no points there. Over to you, Susan. Oh. Well, we don't talk about this much, but uh, it's the 110-meter hurdles. All right, let's see Jerry's answer. Yeah, that's right. The 110-meter hurdles. Can never get a handle on that extra 10 meters. It's okay, Jerry. We have fit spot now. Yep, fit spot and muscle touch. I could do 120 meters of muscle touching. <laughs> I watch it every day. Watch those elbows. Oh, <laughs> maybe you could watch a little closer there. <laughs> Lindex, what did Bacon write down? Well, I've been operating on Lindex for a long time, but she had some old capacitors that were getting pretty leaky. I think she's glad to see those go. Leaky capacitors? All right, let's see what Lindex had to say. Please lift my card, Bacon. I said, memory register 0B0100001 zero 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 X21. They know what they did. That was my second guess. Well, no points there, I'm afraid, and Judge Gary has already started drinking, so it's time for the final question of the show. Who among you does your friend think would win in a fight to the death? Hephaestus. Well, we've been through this one before, Waffle, and uh, the answer's me. Oh, please, call me sir. Well, let's see what Rocco said. I also said me! And that's a match! We both said me, right? That, me that means yes, we matched! Yes, yes. <laughs> let, let me just let me just check with the judges. Well, they don't look happy about it, but they're gonna give you the points. Yeah! <laughs> Needed a win. Ne never seen never seen Judge Gary look so annoyed before. Uh, Susan, who would win in a fight to the death? That's tough. I mean, Jerry has a lot of stamina, but my body's a deadly weapon. I'm gonna have to go with me. Let's see what Jerry said. No argument here. She knows Krav Maga. Three championships. I don't even know what that is. Is that like muscle touching? Uh, a little bit. Yeah, we try to add a lot of warnings to our program just in case, but accidents do still happen. <laughs> okay, super. Next, Lindex, who did Bacon say would win in a fight to the death? Well, Waffle, I have never been in a fight before in my entire life. And I am programmed not to harm humans. That being said, I've operated on Lindex before without protective covering, and she's delivered a harmful shock. Please, Bacon, there might be children watching. Tee -hee. That being said, I believe we both know the answer to this question. Lift my card. Susan. Susan. She knows Krav Maga. Undeniably, Susan is a force of nature. However, she is not a member of your team, so Gary has left. I guess that means no points. Oh well, thanks anyways for giving us the opportunity to show our special connection. Fifteen pin. Well, happy to have you, and happy to have all of you, but totaling up the final scores, we see the winners of today's game are Jerry and Susan from Fitspot. Yeah! yeah! Don't, 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 don't stand up, you're out of shot. Oh, oh. <clears throat>
<clears throat> Congratulations! Yay! You've won today's grand prize, a shopping spree at Dave's Retail and Realtail Store, a place their spokesman assures me exists. Yeah! yeah! That's where I buy all my tails! So thanks to all three of our teams, and thank you for watching Friend or Pretend. I'm Bruce Hoff. We'll see you next time. Second and third place contestants receive a free consultation session with Evan the Crowbar Brown. That utter hack. I'm not going anywhere near him. Are you about to engage in legal proceedings? Need a lawyer, but aren't a lawyer and been told you can't be one? Well, I do. We all know there's a lot of fancy lawyers on TV, and I'm no different. I'm Evan the Crowbar Brown, and I specialize in complicated legal cases such as... How was that? Divorce proceedings. Fire protection. Class action lawsuits. Triple jeopardy. Food poisoning. The Kansas City Shuffle. Two jeopardies at the same time. Mall evictions. Jeopardy. Airing weeknights on NBC. Torts, torts, torts. Apple crime. Unexpected Donnybrook. Terrain vandalism. Vehicular hand swatter. And crime. I'm Evan the Crowbar Brown, and I'm here to crow bar you out of your legal troubles. Call Evan, the Crowbar Brown Law Offices today. We're in the yellow pages under Evan, the Crowbar Brown Law Offices. Which means once again the streets are stocked with taste sensations ready for sampling. It's time for Tureens on the Street. No Tureens here. Tureens, come out and play. Consume. Perfect for the cold autumn weather. Next, Doreen! What's this? It appears to be a piping hot gazpacho made cool by the crisp autumn weather. Refreshing. Next, Doreen. Beef bone broth. Rich urban flavor accentuated by the crisp autumn weather. indefinitely, I remain Franklin Turk. Take your terrines off the street. Attention ticket holders for the upcoming Love Doctors Live Speaking Tour at the Moose Preserve. Management regrets to inform you that the remaining tour dates have been cancelled. 
Anyone with a valid ticket is entitled to a full refund, or you can have your ticket transferred to one of these newly announced upcoming shows. Listen and be rejuvenated as the lessons of our forebears are funneled through the wisdom of the only man brave enough to try. It's former love doctor Hephaestus Newman in his new one-man show, Hephaestus New Man, a healing adventure. Or... Rocco the Love Daco will be taking on all challenges in four-round bouts at the Pine Center Mall parking lot. Seating is limited depending on how busy the Zellas is that night, so get there early. Exchange your tickets all next week at the Moose Lodge. Piffs is having a sale. It's time for Piffs semi-annual emergency liquidation sale. Save up to half or less on famous brand names at open air warehouse prices. Piffs is Piffs. No frills, no gimmicks, no heat. Our low commission sales staff are paid by the ton and we pass the savings on to you. Choosing to buy anywhere else is like choosing to buy anywhere else. Piffs is Piffs. Hello and welcome to Quasario's Astro News, your one-stop news source for everything happening in space. This week, without any major launches or deorbits, I thought it might be fun to talk about the spectacular engineering requirements imposed on these, our fragile little silicon friends. You see, unlike our nurturing, caring, plain vanilla, life-sustaining home here on Earth, the airless void of space is almost incomprehensibly daring. In order to imagine how durable satellites must be, you must first imagine yourself suspended high above the Earth, traveling at thrilling and terrifying orbital velocities. With nothing between you and the unending void of space, you then realize that the only thing preserving our existence on Earth is the pitifully weak force of gravity, slathering our little globe in a thin film of atmosphere. Food for thought. Next, you must imagine yourself being subjected to hard vacuum. This would be like every inch of your body being sucked on until it was bruised and tender, all while being choked. And without a single filthy human hand laid upon you. Because there is no atmosphere, there is nothing to carry heat away from your body. And there is nothing to protect you from the harsh gaze of our sun burning pink hot in the void. Eventually, you will freeze, but not before being blistered by the harsh radiation, as if our sun itself was dribbling hot wax all over your body. Yet our brave little satellites take it all and more. Any one of us would surrender instantly, needing hours of tender aftercare. That's all for Quasario's Astro News. Goodbye! Hi, everyone! It's time for Art Instructions, Private Art Instruction, featuring me, Arthur Instruction. You can call me Private Art. Today we're going to be doing some free drawing, like we talked about last time. As you can see, I've set up my easel, and we've covered it in paper, and I've got my magic marker. You're going to need one of those, too. Last time I asked you to call in and leave your ideas on the station's answering machine. We're going to play those back during the show, and I'm going to incorporate your ideas into our drawing. Are you ready? Grab your markers. Let's go! Hi, Art. My name is Caleb, and my favorite animal is an elephant. That's great, Caleb. Let's start by drawing an elephant. Got those four big legs. It's a good looking trunk too. Hello, Private Art. My name is Tiffany H6, and I'd like to see a picture set in Fairyland. Fairyland. All right, Tiffany, we can do that. I think we can work the elephant into Fairyland quite easily. Arthur Instruction. This is Ethan. I am seven years old and I like space. Please draw some space. Okay, Ethan. I'll add some space. I think you call this science fantasy.
What kind of space helmet would an elephant wear? This reminds me of when I used to do illustrations for Robert Heinlein. Hi, Arthur. I want to ask for something for my dad, and my dad loves World War II, so please draw something from World War II. Okay? Yeah, I... Okay. Okay. Space and fairyland and... Elephants? Yeah, and an elephant. World War II. Hmm, okay, okay. There. Can you tell what it is? Hello, Private Art. My name is Stuart. Could you please draw a binturong, also known as the Asian bear cat? Gee, Stuart, you certainly sound grown up, don't you? I'll try to draw you a binturong in some of the available space. Um, Art owes me 40 bucks. Oh, and make him draw me a cow. Are we not screening me? Sure, Steve. I'll draw you a cow. I already paid you that $40. But you don't remember because you were high on quaaludes. My quaaludes. In fact, I don't know why I paid you back at all. Hello, Mr. Private Art. My name is Emily A. Twerp, and can you please draw love? Wow, Emily. Uh, it's a pretty tall order. Uh, love, you s well, hmm. We have the elephant, and we have the bear cat, and we have World War II, so I'm sure I can make that fit. I mean, there are four loves, right? C.S. Lewis tells us there's four loves. I mean, like, we... Agape, maybe? We can maybe work that in? Sure, okay. Hey, Artie, it's Rhonda. On your way home, can you get milk, eggs, a box of crack bed, chill cereal, and some ham? Love you, honey. Thanks, Rhonda. Milk, eggs, crumbitulous cereal. Is that what I heard? It didn't come through very clear. Milk, eggs. God, what was the last thing? Oh, okay, well, let's start with milk. We all, everyone loves milk. Milk is good. Everyone loves milk. You should drink milk every day. Unless you have porridge digestion when you drink milk. Then don't drink milk every day. Or eat cheese. I had a problem with that once. I had a calcium deposit in my bladder. They had to use a catheter to get it out. And a balloon. Uh, box of cereal. Hey, is anybody, any of my producers catch what the last thing was? Is it ham? Ham. Okay, ham. Uh, uh, the binturong is eating the ham? I'm sure. Okay. Concern at CFUT, I am leaving this message to express in no uncertain terms my dismay and outrage at the content you are putting on the air. I, as I'm sure many people did, tuned in to Late Night Super F*** with Quint and Lulu, expecting to see what I know everyone else was expecting to see, and instead we got... Well, I'm not going to repeat what we got. It's your station, and you should know. I can't believe they didn't get them out. In any case, I will be reporting my sheer disappointment to the CRTC, and please make Art draw a tortoise wearing a hat. Uh, thank you. Why was that on the program? Tortoise. Sure. There's room here. Tortoise. With... He didn't say what kind of hat, so we're getting a hat like this. Good hat. Good, good hat. Strong hat. I feel like we could have just cropped that message to just the piece at the end. Right, audio techs? We aren't broadcasting past the watershed, are we? And... Yeah, yeah I, I'm saying, I, I think this looks pretty good. I th you know what? And always, always 
sign your work. All right, that's all the time we have for today with free drawing here on Art Instructions, Private Art Instruction, featuring me, Arthur Instruction. You can call me Private Art. Next time we'll be trying out some perspective and shading, so be sure to call into the station and leave messages about things you'd want me to shade. Take care. Returning next week to CFUT, the Quizard is back for another school year of his homework help show, Ask Mr. Quizard. I got the homework packet from Oakmont Elementary's grade four class here, and some people are having trouble with question five, finding the hypotenuse of a triangle where one side is four centimeters and the other is six. Uh, it's pretty straightforward, 7.21. The Quizard brings his years of tutoring experience to our station as he helps kids through school. All right, got a social studies quiz coming up at the end of the week. I have the teacher's booklet here, so get your pens and pencils ready. Uh, a, B, B, C, B, D, true, true, C, and the circled field is the fallow field. Tune your kids into the show parents have called Saving Me the Trouble, and of which teachers have said, how is this allowed? All right, grade 11s, we got provincials coming up. Uh, I'll tell you right now, page one is D, B, B, C, and A. If you want the other four pages and some example essay responses, what you're going to do is send a $10 check or money order, care of Quizard, to CFUT with a self-addressed stamped envelope by next Tuesday, all right? Okay, cool, class dismissed. Weekdays at 4 p.m., 6 p.m. Central. Hello, I'm Hank Bastard. Have you ever had a feeling you couldn't explain? What do pickles taste like? Can you hear the words that I'm saying? You ever sat down real hard and got startled? Have you ever gone to sleep? and lost time. I'm moving next week. Have you ever seen a really weird bird? Can you lift this? These are all important questions, but today the question is the Pine Crescent Shrieker. Ah, uh, the question is... The question is, what is the Pine Crescent Shrieker? Residents of this tiny municipality near the mall are rocked from their beds, almost like clockwork, every Saturday night by the guttural howls of an unearthly terror. Or is it? Nobody knows, and those who live here are racked with terror. I heard some howling from the woods. Heck of a thing. I talked to a local man. You must be deeply unsettled. Do you worry for your friends and family? My wife knows Krav Maga. Curious, do the screams keep you up at night? I have a white noise machine. A what? An oscillating fan. It gets cold in the winter. Chilling. Don't worry, we'll get to the bottom of this. Who are you again? To try and locate this horrifying cryptid, I'm here now with local psychic and entrepreneur, Sequoia Barrowgrass, who is going to lend her expertise towards tracking down the Pine Crescent Shrieker. Thank you, Mr. Bastard. You've come to the right place. But I called you here. Typically, when we hear screams emanating from beyond the veil of spirits, it's a sign that the area may be polluted with dark energies. The woods around here are home to many pixies and fey folk, so perhaps a disturbance in our realm is echoing back to theirs, and now we're hearing that echo reflected back, twice removed, like a cousin. Chilling. Oh, if you're cold, I brought an extra scarf in my tote bag. I'll be right back. After meeting with Sequoia, it was obvious that the only way we'd be able to solve the mystery of the Pine Crescent Shrieker was to try and get a first-person account. So we went into the woods. Oh, spirits, please guide.
arthritis. Are you in pain? <laughs> oh no! On a scale of one to ten, how bad does it hurt? It sounds like it's coming from over there. Let's go. Oh no, Mr. Bastard, you have to wait. It would be very dangerous to run into woods that are infested with dark energies or pixie cousins. Mother Gaia, please protect us. No smudge today. I'm all out, but I'll give you two on Tuesday. Namaste. Will that work? Let's go. Come on, bastard. We've got a shrieker to catch. <gasps> Greg, watch uh, out! The Pine Crescent shrieker is in its clearing! Who the hell is... Ah, God! Didn't you hear the otherworldly wailing? It sounded like a sad moose. Like really depressed. Yeah, like a middle-aged moose, maybe with a few extra pounds around the middle and an unfulfilling day job. Hang on. Ah, that's a camera, right? Yeah. Are you filming this for your show? God damn it, Hank, you gullible heap. I'm not a cryptid. I'm doing primal scream therapy. You told me to do it. No, I didn't. Not you, her. <gasps> Greg, you're right! I did tell you to come to these exact woods every second Saturday and cast your anguish into the void. But why? You gotta let the screamies out. Anywho, would you two mind pissing off? My daughter's moving in with her boyfriend next month. Oh, Greg, I'm so sorry. I'll compound you some stronger tinctures. Oh, good. More witch piss from the piss witch. But what do you think? Has the mystery of the Pine Crescent Shrieker been solved? Will these woods continue to roar with the unworldly shrieks? Or has this been an undetermined sighting? Seventy years ago, on the eve of the United Kingdom's entry into the First World War, Lord Grey said, The lamps are going out all over Europe, and we will not see them lit again in our lifetime. To mark this solemn anniversary, we are offering withering savings on all our European lamps here at Gordo's Lamp Emporium with the sale to end all sales. And it's lit, lit, lit. This weekend only, our prices are taking 30, 40, even 50% casualties. These prices are some of the most brutal the world has ever seen. My friend, you would not tell with such high zest to children ardent for some desperate glory. The old lie, dulce et decorum est, to pay full price on lamps. Hello, welcome to Local Mix with Deborah Thibodeau. I'm Deborah Thibodeau. Today we have a very special program, or instead of talking to cool local people who have done cool local things, we are talking to people who have opinions. As many of our viewers may know, the local mall, Pine Center Mall, is slated for demolition to be replaced with the new mall, the Pine Center Millennium Plaza. And as many people are aware, there are opinions. We have put together a crack panel of people who might have opinions about this, who will be sharing their thoughts with us. First up, we have Charles Funtworth, mall ecologist. Hi, Deborah. Thank you for inviting me on your show. Thank you for coming. And we also have Brian Hellman, who is the director of Diamond Edge Holdings. That's right, Deborah. And if I can just get into it in a hurry, I don't know what everyone has such a big problem with. We need new malls in this city, and those old malls just... They gotta go. They gotta go. They're just falling apart. As you can see, it's already a crackerjack panel we've got here because rounding it out, we have George Tremblay, who is an enthusiast for Pine Center Mall. Thanks for having me on here. You know, I think it's really important as somebody who spent their entire life in the mall that I, uh, me, George, I speak for the average George out there who just wants the mall to stay the way it is. Fascinating. All right. Brian, could you lead us a little bit through what Diamond Edge Holdings is planning to do with the new Pine Center Millennium Plaza? Yeah, you bet, Deborah. Like, here's here's the thing, everybody, is we've we've been looking at that space that the Pine Center Mall's been sitting in. It's 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 old. It's crumbly. It's you know it's it's not very exciting. It's not a lot of verve, right? And 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 I've been looking at uh, different development options all around town. It really just comes down to you know what, Pine Center Mall 
needs needs an upgrade. And even more than that, it needs to be knocked down and upgraded from, from the beginning. That's what Pine Center Mall needs. And Pine Center Millennium Plaza is going to bring to you the finest shopping experiences, dining experiences, dating experiences, and overnight hotel experiences you could have in this town. Mm. I know that many of the retailers in Pine Center Mall have been struggling because they are across the street from the more popular mall. Do you think this will turn their fortunes around? Well, Deborah, it's nothing to be concerned about. Like, Oakmont Shopping Center, also uh, owned by Diamond Edge Holdings, is doing very well, and they are very well placed in the market to be part of the shopping experience. But it's, uh, but they are more general shopping experience. We're looking at, at making Pine Center Millennium Plaza a boutique shopping experience for the people who really deserve you know, a good You know, this mall. guy is talking all about what oak whatever is bringing, but Pine has already done everything that it needs to for the general community. We don't need to be better than they are because we already are better. People will, just like you said, go in and from cradle to grave find everything that they need. <laughs> So this is the kind of problem I have to put up with all the time, though. Jorts, I've run into you like a dozen times at, at every meeting we've had with the city to try to, to, try to get this happening. Because you keep having standing the meetings the at the mall. Why are you standing in the way of progress? Because it's on the way to the Panda Express. Charles Fentworth, you're also on this panel and look like you'd like to say something. Thank you very much, Deborah. As Jorts points out here, Pine Center Mall fulfills an important function in the life cycle of the suburban teenager. It is their spawning ground, their meeting place. It is where they go to socialize, and eventually it is where they go to die before reproducing. Now, if we were to disrupt that life cycle, it would have an unfortunate and unpredictable effect on youth culture. Mm, so you're saying we need a crummy mall that's infested with rats because that's where teenagers like to hang out. Exactly. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. P Pine Center Mall is not infested with rats, okay? We've, we've sent people through there dozens of times trying to find any, any, any rats in the mall, any tracer rats. We, there's nothing to be found in that mall. We found, we found a few bugs. We found, we found a couple anthills, you know, but I have never, no one has ever brought me any evidence of rats, and even if they had, I would have told them to get the hell out of my office and bury that so nobody can see it. Oh, now hold on, Mr. Hellman. I know these, uh, the tensions are running high about Pine Center Mall, but I'm going to have to ask that you watch your language. Now, Jorts, you are also getting quite upset, and I understand why. Can you tell us some of your fond memories of Pine Center Mall before it got so shitty? Thank you, Deborah. You know, as somebody who was born in Pine Center Mall, I gotta say, I'm somebody who knows innately what is supposed to be going on there. I grew up, I went to school, and I learned how to get my driver's license at the arcade with Cruising USA. If you tear down those memories, if you tear down the things that I love, well, as my grandpa Orange Julius used to say, George, give me three bucks. Oh, amazing. I thought you were named after Jort's Warehouse, but, well, we learn things every day here on this program. Uh, Charles Funtworth, you haven't had a chance to talk. Thank you, Deborah. See, I just find the renewal process of the Pine Center Mall to be fascinating in its own merits. It doesn't need to be torn down in its entirety in order to act as a, a, a microcosm of the greater economic biodiversity of the region. You see, when a shop closes down as part of its natural life cycle, then pioneer species move into the space. And that's where you see your, oh, I don't know, your Halloween shops, your calendar shops, your electoral offices. And they develop naturally into things like your dollar stores or your foot lockers. And eventually the stability produced by those species provides the habitat for your long-term old growth stores, like your Sears, your Eaton's, Zeller's, mm. A&B Sound. The stores that will never go out of business. Exactly. Mm, I see. Now, Brian, you look annoyed. I'm losing my mind, Deborah. Oh, I'm so sorry, Brian. This is a very touchy subject. Tell us more about what Diamond Edge Holdings is bringing to the table. We're gonna tile the floors. Like, you walk in, you walk into Pine Center Mall right now, and it's all industrial carpet, right? And you you walk into the bathrooms, and it's linoleum, you know. And and half the toilets 
they sourced from they sourced from a home center that's like three blocks away. We upgraded at least and put the carpet just outside of the bathrooms. There used to be carpet in there. Who's we? You don't even work at the mall. You just live there. You you've lived there your whole life. I don't even know what's legal. Is is he allowed to live at this mall? Well, certainly no one stopped him so far. <laughs> if you take away this mall, I'll have nothing. I'll have you know that I was given free $5 footlongs for life. Is that really the only reason why you're still living at the mall, Jorts? $5 footlongs for life? Well, I... It's not not the reason. How about a free two two free meals at the Zeller's restaurant in Millennium Plaza every day, and you can sleep in the banquettes? What about the photo booth? One turn every week. You can bring your own props. I'll throw in a bedding set from Daniel down. You can just pick any banquette you want in the Zeller's. Just don't tell anybody. <gasps> Hold up. The new mall's gonna have a Danny down. That's a local mix scoop with me, Deborah Tibado. Please continue your negotiations. I don't know what a banquette is. It's, it's like a big booth, coated, like covered in vinyl. We'll get you the big one that has the, like, the round table so you can kind of spread out a bit. Do we have those in the food court? Yeah, but this one's gonna be like on its own. And, and because the Zealous is open till 9 o'clock, you can come and go as you want. Normally you have to like, you have to come back into the mall by 6 p.m., right? Holy moly, viewers. Well, while George Tremblay is making a major life decision live on the set of Local Mix with Deborah Thibodeau, how about me? Deborah Thibodeau has a little tete-a-tete -tete with Charles Fontworth, who hasn't really been able to get a word in edgewise. Now, Charles, do you think the new mall will support, perhaps, uh, more popular stores like a Blockbuster video? Well, Deborah, a Blockbuster video is certainly something that can be supported in, in a mall, but its function within the greater mall ecosystem is... Mm, perhaps debatable. You see, a rental property, rather than a direct purchase property, such as an HMV video, um, allows uh, customers to compare purchases in the food court mm -hmm. and perhaps debate things. Whereas when a customer enters a Blockbuster, they return home immediately in order to begin their 24-hour rental period. But wouldn't we see more people coming back every day if they had to return their Blockbuster rentals? And maybe that would lead to more foot traffic to what is arguably Pine Center Mall's worst part, which is its awful, dire food court. That is certainly an interesting proposition, Deborah. I would think that, yes, it is certainly a possibility that the presence of a Blockbuster Mall in the Pine Center Millennium Plaza would improve the diversity of its food court. Ah, oh, thank you, Charles. That was fascinating. But viewers, what do you think? Would you rather see a Quiznos or a Mr. Blimpy? Why not write in? But now, back to Jorts and his major life decision. Jorts, how's it going? Deborah, I've lived in my entire life inside this mall. Mm, so you keep telling us. I had my first kiss here my at the prom. The prom wasn't at the mall, but I still went to it. Yeah, but if you just agree to move into the new mall and get out of this one... Every year, I'll give you a $1,000 gift card to Danny Leather. You can buy yourself some new leather jorts and a fedora. Oh, no, Jorts needs to think about this. Wait, Jorts, you're tracking gold box necklace. Yeah, if you uh, if you want to find me, Jorts, you know I'm I'm in administration between the Stokes Kitchen and the Shoppers Drug Mart doing recreational drugs after eight. He'll crack. Well, that was fascinating. So when we come back... Viewers, if they're made of leather, can they be jorts and mushrooms? Can you eat ones that you find around town? Junior mycologists tell us hell no. This has been Local Mix with Deborah Tibado. I'm Deborah Tibado. Wouldn't they be lorts? Coming up later tonight on CFUT. Jules brings the beat and his dancers bring the heat on Julius Haddock's Breakdance Roundup. Learn about your body as the microship Odyssey continues its sci-fantastic journey through the orifice. As voted by viewers, it's everyone's favorite episode of Boat. What's going to top Franklin's charts this week on Frank's Ranks? Get the latest bovine breakdown with today's beef report. 
and Alan Brunt catches folks unaware at high velocity on Hidden Camera Hyalai. All this and more. The word means it's G. And JP, we're, we're back. back 64 on the scene. Nobody scream, who cares where we've been? We're back now to kill him in 2013. Click, click, clack, get back. We're on the attack. We got years worth of slack and we're picking it up. On this track, we're smack talking. We're overstocked on an ass whooping. So everyone, please form a cue. Don't gotta prove it to you. We just do it. Don't screw with us or our crew. Let's get to it and turn smiles to frowns. Respect the crowns of the first internet rappers to lay the smack down. Pale against the scale of my system specs and fail as bad as Mikhail at the VGX. In fact, forget fail, just call it McHaling. I like my soup fresher than the crap you're exhaling. Oh, snap! Xbox, record that, make a gif of it, send it to my Twitch chat. Yeah, I said gif, it's a hard G, just like me, I'm graphic. 720p. Oh, wait, I'm sorry, what's that, an Atari 720? Don't tell me, you're trying to offend me. Or was it 1080? Xbox, don't hate me, just get your stats straight and we'll settle this like babies. It's 2013, the word means it's G. And JP, we're, we're back. back, 64 on the scene. Nobody scream, who cares where we've been? We're back now to kill him in 2013. It's an attack track from the dark side of Xbox Live, a rhyme in the back from across the map, just in time to remind the whack kids just how leap we rhyme. We'll slow down, leap yeah, you're behind the times. Ooh, yeah, cause I play now on my Android, A. Eh? Clicking cows give me the grains. I need to plant more hay and spin my winnings into coins at a max of five per day to play slots for gold drops and top spots in my friend's praise. It's basically slave labor, but it's free to play. Man, what happened to video games while we were away? Where's the love they generated in those golden days when the PlayStation generation took the Nintendo nation by storm and gave us the thrill of exploration in full three dimensions and self-actualization like we never had before? Now partitioned and rationed to the yearly iterations, all we see is stagnation. Franchise exploitation, we're not gonna take it. The cycle must break, and it's breaking. It's time for a new generation. 64's got the rage, and we're here to clean your plates, son. It's 2013, the word means it's G. And JP, we're, we're back. back, 64 on the scene. Nobody scream, who cares where we've been? We're back now to kill him in 2013. I mean to brag, and I mean to boast. You know I got a knack for breaking off some ghosts. Greatness is waiting, and I answer the call of duty, and above all, I'm ready to brawl. Cause every Everyone is looking at me saying whatever Such handsome, much smart, wow, very clever The power's in me, the Sheba's in you So bow down, dog, I'm coming through I'm coming back from when I crashed in 2004 You may know me as the captain, but my rank is Commodore 64 is coming back, cause it's 2013 And you know that in the background there will always be me The puppet master, I control MCs and producers Do a process and rhyme all of you mortal computers You think your keyboard dope, but I chew on it like chiclets I'll discharge my CRT to turn your LCD to pigments it's not really my style to output tracks like this But why 2 k is fast, you have to know what time it is And that goes for Asus, Motorola, NEC, Apple, IBM, Central, Oracle, and HP Shuffle, Sony, Vizium, Toshiba, Gateway, Intel, Sony, Panasonic, Razer, HTC, Packard, Bell It's not that I have anything against two towers But just know that if you cross me, I will cut your power It's 2013 and we're here to stay Commodore 64 and 64K Cause then the Fox said Nothing, the fox is dead, he's sitting on Macklemore's head And the thrift shop is where they're gonna find you On deep discount clearance by the PS2 We try to step with your V-Sync, we got G-Star and G-Sync We render our Steam shit in Super HD Can't get out of our crib, we got all the achievements And trophies, prestige across all CODs It's not fair when I bust the double ultra hundred Hits then stream your defeat Just to show all of Twitch how we stole every kill Denied every streak, don't forget about trade Boy, we know where we've been But we don't need a Triforce to show 
owe you the links because the verdict's defeat. And you'd better take a seat. Cause it's 2013, the word means it's G. And JP, we're, we're back. back 64 on the scene. Nobody screamed, who cares where we've been? We're back now to kill him in 2013. Yeah, 2013, the word means it's G. And JP, we're back 64 on the scene. Nobody screamed, who cares where we've been? We're back, we ain't leaving 2013. Hi there, Graham here. I'm not a rapper, but I play one on the internet. If you enjoyed that track, it's available for download at loadingreadyrun.bandcamp.com. And additionally, if it's not too much trouble, let's all agree to pretend that I said something funny right here. <laughs> So it's December 14th, and we are recording the season finale for the end of December, and we're doing it now because uh, Jared has to leave town mm -hmm. uh, for Christmas. So we're doing it in sort of a strange order, where typically a rapper and their producer will work on the music and figure out what the hook and the beat will sound like, and then the rapper will record the raps, and then the producer will make it all sound awesome. Uh, we're not doing the first step, we're just recording it to a click track of the right tempo, which is 95 if you're interested. Uh, and then we're gonna give it to Bradley and be like, make us sound amazing. So, but we have confidence in Bradley, so we're not, we're, we're cool with that. Yeah, on a longer, like a, on a longer time scale, we would probably, you know, try and do a little bit of back and forth, but at this point. When you consider that the original song, The Loading Ready Rap, said, And we'll use this rap to take it back to 2013. Technically, we knew this was coming for 10 years. I, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> so, you know, we maybe could have planned slightly more in advance, but to be fair, we were thinking about this like before Desert Bus, mm -hmm. being like, I want to do a rap because we said 2013, and this is literally the last weekly update in 2013. Morgan's not around because he's in Vancouver uh, at, a, at a real job, like an adult, and uh, he wasn't able to, to, to be back for this. But... We do, we do invoke his name, so yeah. happy with that. It's okay, you can come through. We're basically rappers on the comeback trail here, um, and comeback albums, you've got to come out super serious and talk about how hip-hop is dying and you're, you're back to, to bring things back to how they were. So we're sort of taking that concept and mixing it a little bit with, um, with the video game industry, and you know, we're sort of at the tail end slash beginning of uh, console cycles. So things have gotten a little bit stagnant with the current generation of consoles, or I guess the previous generation now, and, uh, and we've got a new generation coming in to mix things up. So that's sort of thematically where we're at. I have no snare. I have no snare in my headphones. You know this used to be a recording studio? Really? Like years ago? Like the, the walls are extra fucking thick, which is really annoying for running chords through. Yeah. Because they have like a layer of soundproofing. Interesting. Which is also why when there's people in both these offices, if someone in that office yells, yeah. we can hear them. But if we try and yell back, they cannot hear us even when these doors are open. Really? Yeah, the sound in here is just dead. Huh. Yeah. It's weird. It's kind of amazing. Yeah. We're trying uh, a bit more of a actual rap sound with this song as well, um, as opposed to the straight up Beastie Boys parodies that we've done in the past. Uh, possibly a dangerous game to play, but uh, I don't know. Could be interesting. <laughs> this is also this is also the first time that um, we've done, I think, any 64K song where. Everyone involved has written their own lyrics. Like before, it's either like Jer would write them all and we would contribute, or I would write them all and we would contribute. But for this one, Jer's rhymes is his and mine's is mine. Oh, snap! The garage band file is in the key of C major. It's just a click track, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a generic club beat. It goes boom, 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 And I'm sure that the actual thing will not sound like that. I actually just wrote two. That's 
That's fantastic. Thank you. That's a really good verse. <laughs> I'm, a big, I'm mostly a big fan of it's a hard G, just like me. Okay. Uh, I'm so hot. Babies being how people online are discussing their console preferences. Ha 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 ha. The joke about liking my soup fresher is that Joel McHale also hosts a show called The Soup. Full disclosure, I have not played Knack or Ghosts. Two games I'm about to claim that I have. Uh, that I'm good at. I also claim that I have superior skill at a lot of things that we have never done, or that we have superior skill at a lot of things that we have never done, so... Yeah, maybe maybe we're not the first internet rappers, but I feel like we've, we've got to be up there. Yeah. 2003. Mm-hmm. Pre-YouTube. Yeah. I mean to brag, and I mean to boast. You know I got a knack for breaking off some ghosts. Greatness is waiting, and I answer the call. Of duty, and above all, I'm ready to brawl. Cause everyone is looking at me, saying whatever. No, I shouldn't, also shouldn't actually. Punctuate. One more joke explanation. Um, in My Name Is, Eminem's first single, he does the uh, line of, and Dr. Dre said, Slim Shady, you a bass head. You know, that whole sort of exchange. And then in his next lead single, he said, and Dr. Dre said, nothing, you idiots, Dr. Dre's dead. He's locked in my basement. Uh, so that's there's a reference in here to the, and then the fox said, nothing, the fox is dead. He's on Macklemore's head. Partially because the fox is over at this point, and also partially because I just, I didn't like it in the first place. I'm testing this mic just to make it sound nice and talk into a computer and I can't freestyle at all so that's basically as good as you're gonna get. Did not breathe. Not breathing problem. <laughs> Remember to breathe, children. Ooh yeah, cause I play now on my Android A. Clicking cows give me the grains I need to plant more hay and spin my winnings into coins at a max of five per day to play slots for gold drops and top spots in my friend's praise. It's basically slave labor but it's free to play. Man, what happened to video games while we were away? I'll try and bring a little more energy to it. Yeah. Don't, don't forget, we rip shows down. We do rip shows down. We rip down. shows down. We rip shows down. We rip shows down. Puff Daddy on Making the Band 2 was talking with uh, someone from MTV about uh, his performance at the MTV Music Awards. And uh, to try and convince them to give him like a 10 minute long spot as the, the final act, he his whole... Uh, method of convincing the MTV producer to give him that time was just shouting into the phone, We rip shows down! 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 Whoa. Ironically, <laughs> It turns out that our song is 4 minutes and 20 seconds long. Coincidentally, I believe. Coincidentally? Uh, something. It would be ironic if we were actually high when we wrote it. I, 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 would just, I had thought that actually, that, would that, mean that wouldn't it was even a coincidence. be ironic. A coincidence would be a conflu uh, conflation of circumstances. Jer, admit it. You're crazy for the hootie Mac. <laughs> <laughs> He's a weed fiend! We are right near where Taco Justice is. Uh, I have no idea what the actual building is though, but we're shooting an outdoor scene next to all the graffiti. You can see all the graffiti out here. Um, but of course, we had to contend with some rain earlier and we have a hole in the clouds. Uh, the lights are all set up. I think it's gonna be a pretty good night. We are now in Epic Games and more, uh, just just down the road from the moon base, actually. And uh, they were super okay with uh, us filming here, which is great because the place looks amazing. So it's gonna be perfect. It was one of the painless, one of the most painless. Hey, can we shoot in your place? Pitches we've ever had.
there's a, a song that uh, Kendrick Lamar did a verse in called Control uh, by Big Sean. And uh, in it, he calls out like a whole bunch of other up-and-coming rappers and basically says he is going to kill them. Uh, and so the, there's a section in the Commodore verse where it goes in and more or less mentions every uh, major PC manufacturer of today uh, and says that it is going to cut their power because that seemed appropriate. It seemed nice to be able to have a call-out in our song without actually having to call out anyone who might hurt us. With the slack, and we're picking it up on this track. We're smacked overstocked on an ass whooping, so everyone please form the queue. Unfortunately, my rhymes are so fast that I can't get up back on track if I lose my place ever uh, when lip syncing. So, uh, Graham uh, has volunteered. Uh, well, Graham and Beige and many other people have been volunteering all day to teleprompt both myself and Graham and uh, and keep us on track throughout our uh, our lip syncing. Which, which has resulted in, in sensual cuddling. It was really I'm sensual. Sure. Send your fan fictions to squirrel get off my ass at loadingreadyrun.com. <laughs> Is this food better? Yes. Wait, does this make me look more gangster? Oh, you're a fly girl. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty gangster dance. <laughs> okay, I'm done. All right. I think I saw 50 Cent do that once. <laughs> since, we've, since we had some questions about the post-production for 2013, we thought we'd give you another little look into the, the editing process. Uh, the way that we shot this was we did basically a bunch of different setups you know, um, standing at the wall, standing at the wall close up, standing at the wall with a fisheye, standing at uh, this part of the game shop, standing at this part of the game shop. And we would do the song all the way through uh, at least once, often twice, because we would mess up uh, in each of those locations, and then bring it onto the computer here. And then so what we ended up with uh, was the angles. Uh, let me show you all the different angles. Please form a cue. Don't got to prove it to you. We just do it. Don't screw with us or a crew. Let's get to it. Uh, each different angle all synchronized. Uh, and then we can go through and I can choose which angle I pick for what's going to be the main, the main display. And then for all the shots at the Commodore, um, I went through on... Um, I went through in After Effects and synced everything up. Um to the dialogue of the Commodore and then motion tracked it onto the screen. The original shot for this is just Jar and I sitting there, uh, just standing there holding the screen for a few minutes. Some people were asking for these shots. Uh, this is not a body rig. We cannot, well, maybe we could probably afford a body rig, but we can't validate the purchase of a body rig. Literally what this is is the camera with the um, uh, fisheye lens on it on the tripod and we're just sort of holding the tripod like this and kind of resting it against our hips and just walking around like that and uh, works pretty well. Rippity wrap on down to Dave's discount rapsmanship. and welcome to the panelists. I'm your host, Charlie Bucket, and joining me are my four grandparents, who all share one bed in our cramped and squalid tenement. On my right, we have team Adam and Kathleen. What is your team name? We're team Glass Elevator. We're going to space. Yeah, I've always wanted to reenact the plot of Moonraker. Ooh, can I be Jaws? Yes. Do you want to be my strong girlfriend? Yes. Yeah. And on my left, we have team Ian and Graham. What is your team name? 
steam obsidian escalator. It's a relaxed and refined way to get to the nether. Well, so everybody is leaving this planet, which is pretty good news. And in further good news, Mother Gaia has invited you to tour her celestial craft room, where she meticulously embroiders the fabric of creation. You make an appreciative comment about her immaculately organized morphology cabinet, and she is so flattered that she pulls down some of her favorite adaptive traits and says you may take one as a souvenir of your visit. You don't want to seem a fussy customer, so you will commit to choosing something from the first box that you open. The boxes are labeled sticky, silky, and stomach. Which do you open? Team Obsidian Escalator. My stomach, I think I'm pretty happy with. So, yeah. And Silky's taken care of. So I guess we're going to see what's up with Sticky. You open the box labeled Sticky and you see multiple options. Either the very sticky hands of the gecko or the very sticky retractable tongue of the chameleon. While you're thinking about that, do you choose Silky or Stomach? I love to eat. So... Let's roll those dice. Stomach. Tum, tum, tum. <laughs> yeah. You open the box to find a new feature to ease your digestion and expand your dietary options. You can either have the corrosive stomach acid of the bearded vulture, which can digest bones, but it might give you nightmarish heartburn, or the multi-stage stomach of the common cow, which can break down even the least nutritious food, but you will be gassy. Hmm. Can you eat anything? Team Sticky, what say you? So you'd, you'd rather the... The hands, then. That's what I'm thinking, especially seeing as I'm pretty sure, and I'm sure I'll be corrected if this isn't true, the gecko can release. Let's get that clarification. They have microscopic hairs on their fingers that reach between the molecules of things. So it's really just like your hands are Velcro for the stuff the universe is made of. That sounds great. I'll have the tongue. Oh, we're going to split it up. I see. Why, why not? Yeah, right? I mean, there's two of us. Just seems like it'd be fun at parties, don't have to raise the bowl of popcorn to my face. Just sit there. Don't have to use a spoon with popcorn either. And bedroom applications. Mm. Like turning off the light. Yes, like turning off the light. We could eat an airplane. So you want the corrosive stomach acid of the bearded vulture? Yes, I do. It's, that animal just like is like, what's that? A spine? <laughs> no, delicious. I'm thinking, I'm thinking bigger ball than that. I want to like work at an office job and open up a Tupperware container and there's just a fucking tin can inside and I eat that. I want to get weird. I want to freak people out. So that leaves me with the four stage stomach of a cow and a lot of gas. Sure does. Taking one for the team. <laughs> yeah. But you know what I get? What? Cuds. Yeah. I can always revisit my food. Yes. That's the best part. Oh. You always have leftovers. Oh, finally. You know what? Why? You go out to a nice meal, you spend like probably like $17 or $18 on one of those nice Neapolitan pizzas with like mm -hmm. the good crispy thin crust. And you're like, oh, that was over too quickly. Yeah. Not me anymore. It's coming right back up for seconds <laughs> later. I'm laying in bed. And he's like, hmm, marinara. <laughs> I just want to be in the Guinness Book of World Records. For the man who ate the most tin cans? Oh, this is I ate an airplane. An entire... I, I ate an entire airplane. I think somebody might have already eaten an airplane. I think so, but I think might have what if I two. eat two airplanes? Yeah, I can oh. digest anything. It doesn't matter. Keep throwing airplanes at just, me. Yeah, just challenge the current winner to an airplane eating contest. Yeah. Hell yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. they'll tap out first. Yeah. Though, you know, Adam, what I will point out is that you have very strong stomach acid, but not very strong teeth. You'll have to cut that airplane up into tiny pieces if you want to win the airplane eating contest. Yeah, I think that's what the person did. Oh, the person I think who so. ate an airplane, they just cut them up into like little tiny pieces. You know what? I bet they cheated. Them. I don't, bet they didn't eat all the upholstery off the seats. So that's where you get them. Yeah, I bet you they didn't eat the airline attendants either. No. <laughs> Cowards. Seems like the upholstery would be the most edible part. You think so? Of it, like, uh, uh, as opposed to like the nuts and bolts and the part, the things in the cockpit and the wires and stuff. Look, I just really want our stomachs to be magical powers, and I don't think I'm going to be able to get that out of this. <laughs> I really want to just eat an airplane. Eating bones is not magical enough for you? Well, I mean, it's cool, but... Every time you go to KFC, you're going to be effectively eating Ortolan. A whole bird all at once. And you don't even have to hide from God, because it's your power. <laughs> it's, a ri it's a rich mental image. Uh, I don't like it. Well, could you paint me a rich mental image that, that you might like of your tongue activities? Running for the door, and, you know, there's like a door closing. It might lock or something. Just whoop, grab the door. Uh, 
grab the elevator, make sure that, you know, stop the elevator from closing. Just save time, even if the elevator's already, if the door's already closed, just, like, hit the button when I'm still, like, six feet away from the elevator. Just, you know, get it going that much sooner. Keys on the way out. Oh, yeah, yeah. Change right. on the ground. Yeah, whoops, dropped my phone. <laughs> Got it. No problem. Didn't hit the ground. You are putting your tongue on a lot of disgusting things that I would not lick otherwise. Yeah. Do you know when people touch elevator buttons? Chameleons eat bugs. So do we. As long as you swish and spit afterwards, you're good. Yeah. It does leave behind a little mucus trail, though. It's fine. That's for the next person to deal with. I can use this for good. Like, you know, in Mad Max where they had the methane generation thing <laughs> that the pigs... I, I could That's you. I could plug myself in. I could... Uh, re renewable ecological energy. Yeah. Mother Gaia will thank me so much. Maybe she'll let me take another trait later. We are perfectly equipped to handle a nuclear apocalypse. Oh, yeah. We would survive. Yeah, you... I can eat anything. You can make energy. Oh, my God. We'll run Barter Town. Oh. That'll be us. Yeah, I'm going to be the pigs in the cage. And you're going to be like, ah. <laughs> I'll be like eating a bone in the background. Just us in our wasteland isolation zone. Me tooting up a storm so we can play PlayStation. Yeah. <laughs> Yes! Okay! I'm in! I'm in! 100%! You're good at pulling things off at a distance. Mm -hmm. I'm good at keeping things attached. Okay. Do you know where those two skills are useful but frowned upon? No, but I can't wait to find out. The world of casino heists. Oh, I love casino heists! Yes! I mean, you'll be able to hit things like move cameras with your tongue. Oh, this is perfect. To grab single chips and put them in the right area yes. and i'll have all the cards oh this is so good what about when they send the sentinels after you shoot i didn't think of whether or not this was a genetic mutation yeah you two harder to hide your power yeah we're like number six and seven of the like you know 11 plus people that they generally need for these things. We're not doing this by ourselves. No, we're all, we're not like the figureheads of this. We're not the ones going to jail. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have we have powers. We're not just the face like George Clooney. Yeah. Well, then you have to cut us in because we could help your little casino gang. Adam, we'll make all evidence disappear. I'll yeah. gas the guards. It's foolproof. Yeah, that sounds great. Honestly. High five. No. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I'm good. Thanks. So I think what we've concluded is we cannot let this episode air because we have invented the perfect crime. So we're going to be rich, which is good news. And in further good news, good news! You have finally met your soulmate. And after a fairy tale romance, the two of you are married in a grand yet tasteful ceremony. The bad news is that your partner's airheaded fairy godmother brought the wrong envelope to the wedding. And instead of blessing your honeymoon, she has cursed it. For the duration of your non-refundable trip to Belgium, your soulmate will be transformed, but only in your eyes. No one else in the world will notice anything different, but to you, they will not look or sound like themselves. And to find out what they'll look like, let's spin the wheel! <laughs> oh no. Spin that wheel! All right. <gasps> Nine excited multi-swoons! <laughs> Just that cloud of small dogs. Hold up. Are the poodles stacked one on top of each other? Or is it a swarm? Or is it like a blob? Imagine kind of a person-shaped cloud of poodles. A murmuration of poodles. Okay. And only we see it. And hear it. And hear it. And taste it and smell it. Oh, no. That's going to be a weird honeymoon. Yeah. yeah. Enjoy consummating your marriage. We might need that tongue power. Team of City and Escalator. Just to keep the lights off. Huh. Yourself? It's never been a fantasy of mine. No, strangely. I wouldn't say I'm turned on by me. No. It's a miracle anybody else is. So how do you go about your respective honeymoons with this image without hurting your spouse's feelings? Does it have a butthole? In the nine buttholes. It has nine buttholes? Like, so like, it has nine buttholes, correct? It's nine poodles. It's nine poodles. Because I'm picturing one poodle is a body. Three of them are an arm. Right. Do they rearrange themselves? Because they're poodles, right? They're quite excited. Like, they're excited. 
Yeah. So they're not just going to be standing still. Wait, you poodles know? are fucking huge too, aren't no, they? No, they're Maltese big. are small. Are Maltese though. are small? Okay. I think. It's a lot of limb. A lot of limb and a lot of fur. Uh, a poodle centipede thing, yep. sort of. Yes. Okay. With nine buttholes. With nine, well, one for each poodle. Mm-hmm. Um, that's... The normal amount. Because, like, you'd go to kiss them. And it's just a dog. That's weird, right? And not, But the dog is excited, so it's like... Oh, that made it worse. <laughs> oh, I don't think I'd be able to keep it together. Oh, I don't oh, think I would no, be able to. All nine of the heads are like... And then, like, they touch... Like, you're going to grab your face, right? But the ends of their hands are just dogs' faces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, this keeps getting worse. The farther down we go, the worse it gets. Could we cover ourselves in peanut butter to make the bedtime of it? I mean, you would have to explain that to your significant other. Be like, yeah, uh, okay, I know we just got married, but sorry to spring this on you. <laughs> I, I need you to coat me in peanut, peanut butter, butter. Yeah. before we can do any bedroom stuff. Yes. And you just lie back and... Think of all the times that you made mistakes and how this is probably your comeuppance. Yeah. They aren't actually dogs. They only look like dogs to you. You're asking your human wife and any alien or FBI observers will see you asking a human woman to coat you in peanut butter and while she looks extremely confused. People have asked for weirder things on their honeymoon, Ian. I have a question. What are you going to do when yourself, question mark, needs to go down on... Is it like a cloaking device down there? Or just a hologram or are we Yeah, I'm I okay. I'm I'm no no, I'm I'm done being coy. I didn't I didn't go hard into the tongue thing being like, you know, you could do cunnilingus and also have sex at the same time. So this question, I'm just going for it. If I'm having sex with someone that is in reality a woman, but I perceive them as a man. How does the vagina worker, do we need to talk about if they're comfortable with anal on the honeymoon? Can I put that in a, li a little bit more of a metaphor then? <laughs> Please, yeah. Christ, yes. Yeah. Is it ray shielded down there near the, the exhaust port or is there an assault turret? What kind of metaphor was that? Well, I mean, if my x is going to be making the trench run, I got to know what I'm aiming for. You can't hit a target of that size. I used a bullseye them back in Baker's Canyon with my T-16. <laughs> I think there is no uh, better time than your honeymoon to establish solid communication in the bedroom. Let me be clear, I have not actually done martial arts before, mm -hmm. but I understand that when you, you know, when you are to break a board, mm -hmm. you're supposed to punch through the board like it's not there. You have to believe. Mm -hmm. Do I have to trick myself into not believing that there is a board? You mean that you... Mm. And in this metaphor, you are the board. Oh, no, I'm, I'm the fist. The, I'm asking, you're, you're is both... there a board that I need to pr pretend isn't there, or can I just one-inch punch? Yeah, like, is it a halt? Like, is the illusion just an illusion? Like, that we feel it and everything, because it's like, look, Kathleen. Can we just... Nine dogs with buttholes, okay? <laughs> I'm going okay. to lie to my spells and say I've gotten a VD. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, you're just gonna pull parachute. Like, you're just like, I'm out! And you're just like, I'm, be like, I'm sorry. I have a terrible bladder infection, and I can look at every historic church within Belgium, but if we get anywhere near the bedroom, uh, it's just gonna, I'm just gonna be peeing blood. So, no fun times for me till yeah. we get back. I'm, I'm just gonna. Invent. That's probably the best thing to do, right? Yeah, just a case of bad no libido. Yeah. Be like, I have a headache. I have a three week long headache. <laughs> it's a real big one. It's a doozy. Yeah. Could you head out to like Belgian 7 Eleven and get me some more? You got it, mate. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, because the thing is, after more than a day with a cloud of excited Maltese poodles, I will have a headache. Yeah, you will. Right? Yeah, you will. Because it's just going to be. Arf, arf, arf. <laughs> like. Oh, just thinking about it. It'd be so, it'd be too much. It's like, I get my fill of people pretty quickly. And I think I would get my fill, my social fill of nine excitable Maltese poodles pretty quickly. Probably like five minutes into the flight to Belgium, actually. Oh my God. Oh, the flight. Oh my God, the oh, flight. Oh, you've got that a lot easier than they mm -hmm. do. This is hell. We found hell. So a week and a half into your honeymoon, you get an email from your fairy godmother-in-law who feels terrible. Um, she's unfortunately not competent enough to reverse the curse entirely, but she would like to make it up to you. 
she can transfer the curse to you so that you will appear as whatever in the eyes of your soulmate and transmute your soulmate into something else. Do you take her up on this? Yes. Spin the wheel! Anything! <laughs> anything! Also anything. revenge! <laughs> Our spouse also, can spend a week it. and a half with nine dogs! <laughs> if we get nine dogs again, <laughs> we're in a lot of trouble. Well, then 18 dogs are going to have a nice trip to Belgium. <laughs> Please. Dogs. Not the dogs. No. Dogs. <laughs> So your soulmate looks like you, and you to your soulmate look like nine dogs. Are you happy? <laughs> this is great. I... I'm going to start checking off UNESCO World Heritage Sites. <laughs> Apparently Waterloo's in Belgium. Uh, and you know what? I can't think of anybody who would be more interested in going to Waterloo than also me. <laughs> so... You know exactly the test that your spouse is going through because you went through it for a week and a half. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, we're not divorced yet, so now Ball's in their court. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say Ball. <laughs> Around nine <laughs> like, it's going to be weird to watch myself undress. Is it? Have you never seen yourself undress? I hadn't thought about that. We can check ourselves for weird stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hey, me, turn around. I got some moles I want to look at. Yeah. Let me see that crack. Me? Hate to see me go, but love to watch me leave. <laughs> <laughs> Show me my feet. <laughs> Team Obsidian Escalator, do you wish to... Transmute your spouse again. I am very afraid, and I'm even more afraid that you look like you want to spin it. I think I oh. spin it, you Graham, coward. Graham, it's my hunting moon. I only get to do this once, and I need something I can fuck. <laughs> All right, well, press your fingers luck. crossed for find the lady, Martha Stewart, I guess. Chiquita banana. banana. This changes nothing. She is the best banana in a certain way. Is Chiquita banana the anthropomorphized banana? Yes. Ah. So they see us as themselves, and we see them as Chiquita banana. Yep. Time to make a banana split. Mm-hmm. Do we peel it from the top or the bottom? <laughs> like the way the humans do or the monkeys do? God's perfect fruit, Adam. She gets all freckly and brown towards the end of the honeymoon. Ah! Ew! <laughs> she's all soft. Like, <laughs> dip. Yeah. Uh, That's how you know she's ready. Oh, the plane ride back is the worst, though, because it just smells like an, a rancid banana. Yeah. But then we land and it's fine. I'm still standing, but I could not handle talking to myself that's not myself. That messes me up on a level that I don't think I can properly explain to the people in this room. My psyche would not be able to take it. Is there a chance that he could see himself but wearing his wife's clothes? Oh no, I don't dress like me. Oh no, I bet you I look cute as hell. Are we talking Cavendish or Gros Michel? Because I know that the old candies mm -hmm. were based on the old varietal of the banana. And I want to know if I'm going to be scarred for runts for the rest of my life. I mean, I think that's a question for the Dole Corporation. <laughs> what strain of banana was Chiquita? You're a very brave man if you choose to find out. I'll leave that as an exercise to the viewer. Are its clothes its skin? So when it undresses at night, does it unpeel itself? No, Chiquita banana has a fruit hat and a little flamenco dress. Well, then your partner's always, you know, dressed for a fancy night out, which is kind of nice. Yeah. I'd also hate to see a camisole that turns brown over time. I mean, any camisole will turn brown over time if you don't take it off or <laughs> wash it. Oh, but we don't have to worry about birth control because modern bananas are sterile. Due to the monoculture. Holy shit, Ian. Okay, so you are talking to me, but... It's, it's me talk Like, it's the way I'm talking right now, but it's your voice, your body. Is weed legal in Belgium? <laughs> yeah. Could we maybe just... <laughs> yeah, I just get super high and just like... And be like, sure, okay. Sure, yeah, this yeah is let's go down a canal boat. Yeah. Woo. Let's look at an old town square. And get your... No, are you nine... You're nine poodles at this point, yeah? They're dealing Ooh. with nine poodles. What do nine stoned poodles look like? 
I kind of like Scooby-Doo. Actually, that's probably an improvement for everyone. For me to be high as hell, and for my spouse to perceive nine stone dogs. Yeah. Because they'd probably move less fast. Yeah. They'd be able to distract them with snacks. Yeah. You could distract me with snacks. Anyhow, there would be hardly any difference. I'd be very high. It's like my <laughs> biggest weakness, snacks. And it's not like an animal abuse problem because th- it's not actually stone dogs. It's no. You're just, you, you are, you the human are high. It's perfect. It's tolerable. Yeah. Perfect's a very strong adjective that should not be applied to the situation. No, this is so far from perfect. I just can't stop thinking about rolling over and seeing myself in the bed. It's nice that you roll over. Do you sit and beg as well? <laughs> I hate you. Who is a good boy? What happens if your spouse just isn't as interested once you get back? Oh, they start getting distant. Yeah, she, you know, they're, they're into doggy style. They prefer you better when you were nine excitable Maltese poodles. It wasn't meant to be. It's out of my hands. Bingo, bango, bongo, done by noon. You could probably make a strong argument for annulment, given that there's no way this marriage was consummated. Yeah. What if you find out that you liked your spouse better as a banana? I could probably just work bananas into the bedroom. Soft, good, smooth, silky skin. Firm, but yielding. People put up with way weirder fetishes than just, can I have some bananas around while we do it? Yeah, we previously established that our spouse would be okay with that whole peanut butter thing. It's true. And they do go together. I would like to thank Kathleen and Adam and Ian and Graham for talking. I would like to thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing. This has been The Panelists. Martha Martha Stewart! Stewart. Clap, 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 clap. (laughs) several like sacred churches and UNESCO World Heritage sites that perhaps a swarm of Maltese poodles would not add to the sacrosanct atmosphere of. No. Yeah, what would God say? I think God may have deserted us in this trying time. Yeah, that's... is what was making all the noise. How? I was wedged underneath the box of cursed dolls. The pressure must have turned it on. Why do we have that anyway? The box of cursed dolls? No, we have the box of cursed dolls because if we get rid of it, Alex dies. Why do we have the bop it? Uh, I think we bought it for a video a few years ago. Also, it's fun. Bop it. Twist it. Pull it. Surrender your soul to the virus. Get over <laughs> Huh. I would have thought it would have taken months for the new prop room to become as haunted as the old one. How about we clean this place up and get rid of all the haunted props? Okay. I guess I'll just put this back in the box of cursed dolls then. Yeah. Sure. Aren't you worried that the centripetal force is going to just tear this whole thing apart? I thought that was the point. Hmm. Stop that and come help me clean the prop room. Why? What do you mean, why? He asked you a simple question, James. Why? Seriously? Please, don't let me distract you from illuminating the subject at hand. Because it needs to get done. Nah. Seems we're at an impasse. Ugh. Fine. What if I bought you both ice cream? (gasps) From the annually voted best in the city? Beacon Drive-In? Or two drumsticks from the corner store. No deal. Fine, Beacon Drive-In, but not until we've cleaned out the prop room, sorted the garbage, and taken everything we're getting rid of to the thrift store. 
I'm glad we could make a deal. Ah, ice cream weather. Yes, the sweet taste of a job well done. If I literally had to bribe you to do the job, I don't think you can take pride in it. This is hardly a bribe, James. We came to an accord. I thought we came here in a Nissan. Uh, <laughs> Brain freeze? No. What do you want to do now? No, uh, 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 no, we have a video to shoot. Shoot it? What did the video ever do to you? Mm. Oh, come on, it wasn't that bad of a joke. No, brain freeze. Okay, turds in space, scene three. In this scene, Beej is playing the monster from beyond the colon, and James is Dr. Nelson Charcoal Pants, the only scientist who can stop him. So, Alex, you're on camera. Cameron, you're on boom. So, uh, what's my motivation here? Uh, you are Butstronaut 2. You don't really have any motivation. You say one line and get immediately killed. No, 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 no. I mean, for the entire thing. To get good sound? Yeah, that's not really doing it for me. Yeah, me either. What? I bet we'd be more motivated if we had dilly bars. No, 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 not this again. After the shoot, we'll go down to the grocery store and get a two liter of ice milk for all of us to share. Counter offer. After we finish this scene, we go and get Magnum Double Peanut Butter Bars. After the shoot, store brand fudgesicles. Name brand fudgesicles. Fine. Pleasure doing business with you. We literally already pay you to be here. Rolling. Speed. You know what? I'm detecting a lot of hostility here, so I'm going to need to ask for an increase in rates. I don't feel that you're entering into this negotiation from a position of humility and respect. You have demanded more ice cream of me every time we've spoken. Precisely. Given inflation, I think you should have anticipated a rise in rates. All we're asking you to do is read the jokes that we have written for you. And all we're asking for is frozen milk desserts. It's not complex. Cameron, this is ludicrous! No, this is insulting. I'm going to my trailer. Call me back when you have desserts. You don't have a trailer! Trailer, haunted prop room, same thing. Your crew must see you calm. If you're frustrated, find a confidant and share in private. Then make a decision. Are you a confidant? I can be. This ice cream thing is bullshit. Uh-huh. It's completely out of hand and actively hurting productivity. Uh-huh. It has to stop. Uh-huh. Thanks, Beach. I'm just gonna tell them no. What the dick do you mean, no? I'm not gonna keep giving you ice cream for doing your job. Well, good luck recasting me, then. Cool. Then your next invoice is gonna look real sparse. Fine. I suppose I can return to making comedy because I find it creatively rewarding and also for money, but not for ice cream. Terrific! Your line is, in space, no one can hear you cut ass. And? And then the monster kills you. Good. Hey! Thanks for that advice you gave me earlier, Beach. Anytime. I should really lean on you more for that sort of thing. I mean, you are a successful businessman. What? No, that was just the Picard Management Tips Twitter account. D do you get most of your business advice from Twitter? All. Cam, are you going to be much longer? I don't know. What the hell did you eat? Around five liters of ice cream. Yeah, so did everybody else. I'm lactose intolerant. I hope that whatever is happening inside of you hurts the entire time. It does. You're listening to Quirpline here on QWRPFM. Line this week is brought to you by the Oracular Gentacular Spectacular. When you have no idea what to make for breakfast, try consulting the Oracular Gentacular Spectacular because food is sustentacular. Morning, Innsburg. Welcome to Corp Line. It's your boy G Money here with A Train. How's it going, Alex? A little to the left. 
Great to hear. So am I. I hope everyone else is feeling equally comfortable out there in beautiful Innsberg. Three free months of Netflix. With with purchase? Sure. How do I redeem? Yeah, let's take that up with the tourism board, I think. Hard pass. Well, as you are doubtless aware, listeners at home, it is day four of the explosive Burp Winter trial. As you know, local historian Bertha Burpwinter is alleged to have been using a citywide criminal network to grow what authorities have described as comically vast amounts of marijuana in the ideal growing conditions of Innsberg's historic cellars. Following her arrest months ago, and exclusively broadcast on QWRP for the record, the case is finally going to trial, and we're very excited for today, the cross-examination of the defendant herself. We now go live to summer intern Derek on location at Innsberg Courthouse. Hi, Graham. Hi, Alex. I've been camping out at the courthouse for four days, and in my expert legal opinion, she's guilty. Can I go home now? You're supposed to go home every night, Derek. Oh, thank goodness. The vending machines just ran out of holy, and I don't know what I'd do if I couldn't get another one. Can you describe the atmosphere in the courtroom today, Derek? It's your standard nitrogen-oxygen mix with slightly higher levels of carbon dioxide due to all the talking. Okay. I'm sorry, guys. Everybody here has been really precise and it's just starting to rub off on me. It, it's okay. Has, has the day's proceedings begun yet? Oh, the judge is coming in right now. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the Honorable Judge Parker Waffle. The judge is resplendent in her black silk robes. So stoic and intimidating. Oh, you may be seated. Oh, Bertha better watch out today. Judge Parker Waffle seems like she's in a bad mood, and I've heard the lawyers gossiping that she's a real hard ass. Is the representative for the prosecution here? Corb Fortress Esquire, representing the prosecution, Your Honor. Thank you. And unless my eyes deceive me, I do not see the representative for the defense. Is Carolyn Cable here? I fired that state-appointed Lambray. She was a hack. Miss Burpwinter, you do realize that a trial cannot proceed without some sort of defense. Are you prepared to defend yourself, or do we need to pause proceedings so you can find another attorney to represent your case? I'll handle this myself. You don't scare me, you big puffed-up suit. Oh, wow, guys, this is a major shock. Bertha fired a lawyer. I heard that if you lose the case, then you go to super jail. They call it double jeopardy. Derek, how is it you've been there for four days and still know so little about the legal system? Everything I learned was from Corpus Corgi, the legal dog. They canceled the crossover Spider-Man by the fifth issue, and I never got to see the ending. Order, order in the court. I need order in the court. Miss Burpwinter, I just need to make it clear to you how unusual the circumstance is. But as you have passed the psych evaluation, you are free to represent yourself as you see fit. Please take the stand so we can resume your cross-examination. What are you punks looking at? Take a photo, it'll last longer. Bertha Burpwinter, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God? You f***ing ain't right. I'ma drop some bombs up in this courtroom. I'll take that as a yes. Mr. Fortress, you may approach the stand. Bring it on, Corby. I've pushed through harder blockages than you this morning. May it please the court, I have put away more dirt bags than you've had hot meals. Miss Burpwinter, we've already heard testimony from Innsberg's finest in the form of Officer Steve that... There is an extensive grow operation centered amongst Innsberg's historic cellars. You being the only person with prime and exclusive access to said cellars makes you the principal suspect of this investigation. Do you deny that you have been using Innsberg's historic cellars as a grow up for marijuana? You're damn right I deny it. I've been using Innsberg's historic cellars to create hash oil. Ain't no market for flour in this day and age. I am unsure of what that means, but it is clearly narcotic stock. I would like to move for a verdict of guilty, Your Honor. Well, 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 simmer down now, Corb. We have due process for a reason. Miss Burpwinter, you do realize that when you say incriminating things on the stand, they can and will be used against you in a court of law. Like the court we are currently in right now. 
You mean this sham show you call justice? You're in my house now, kitty. Miss Burpwinter, you do not deny, then, that you have been growing marijuana for the purposes of trafficking. Hold your horses there, you tall drink of ass. I was trafficking it, all right, from Innsberg's historic cellars straight into my lungs. So, Miss Burpwinter, you are claiming, then, that these products were produced exclusively for personal use. Well, I'm not a charity. 7.5 metric tons. Do you know how many lung buster bong rips it takes to get me low? <laughs> order, order in the court. Miss Burp Winter, you are allowed to defend yourself as you see fit, but I do caution you that the hammock slam defense was found inadmissible as court evidence in the Supreme Court trial. Anybody with half a brain cell knows Richter's completely full of shit. I'm real as steel and twice as high. Stenographer, let the record show that once again the defendant has muzzle-swept me with her finger guns. Your ass is lucky these aren't my real nines or you'd be sitting six feet lower. <laughs> wow, wow, order, order, order. Miss Burpwinter, you cannot threaten the prosecuting attorney no matter how punchable he may look. I know, right? He's got a nose you just want to sink your knuckles into. The momentum in the court has clearly turned in Bertha's favor. I'm kind of glad I never got a chance to interview her. She seems gangsta OG hard ass. Derek, where did you learn language like that? Day two! Listen, you lightweights may have a hard time believing I need that much skunk, but it's true. I'm a threat to everything green in four counties. Miss Perpwinter, your legendary resistance aside, this county limits personal possession of marijuana plants to three, not more than seven feet tall. Well, that's just it. I didn't possess any of it. I don't own Innsberg's historic cellars. But we've already established that you have exclusive access. Who else could possibly access your stash? Buckle up, because I'm going to dump a surprise witness on your ass. The defense calls Sandra Brentmore to the stand. Okay, okay. You know, normally you can't actually interrupt your own cross-examination, but we're on day four and we're not really making a lot of progress, and I kind of just want to see where this goes. I'll allow it. They're calling Sandra Brentmore to the stand. She's the one who runs Innsberg's rum tunnels. She's also the one who banned my dad. Thanks, Mrs. Brentmore. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, help you got? Sure, why not? What up, Sandy B? Give me some skin. These chumps are trying to put me in federal slam, saying I owned all that weed. As an expert on the underground, can you tell the court who owns Innsberg's historic cellars? Well, I'm not an expert on Innsberg's historic cellars, but I can tell you that the Innsberg rum tunnels are owned by the city of Innsberg, as part of a historic site. They're open from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Mondays through Fridays. Bring a scarf because it's quite dank down there. Admission is $10, 15 if you want some rum. So would you say that Innsberg's historic cellars are part of the rum tunnel network given that they are connected? That's a difficult question to answer because there's so many entrances to the rum tunnels that have opened up over the years. For example, there's various sinkholes all over town. There's the entire operation that Farmer Bumper has going. As an aside to the courtroom, may I say, nobody should pay to go down the corn corridor. One, it's not very good. Two, you will fall into a rum tunnel. There's the secret pipesman's bone holes, sluice number four, and the East Sump Acres culvert grid, most of Second Avenue. And yes, some of Innsberg's historic cellars do connect directly to the rum tunnel network. Well, there you have it. If you're looking for somebody to arrest for possession, cast your eyes on yourself, Innsberg. The whole city's to blame. Whoa, 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 hold on now. The actual rum tunnels themselves do not have any marijuana or hashish in them. There may be a few patches of psychotropic mushrooms, but there's no drugs. Except the mushrooms. And the mold in the rum. Look, the city owns the rum tunnels. The rum tunnels are connected to Innsberg's historic cellars, and Innsberg's historic cellars are connected to the weed, which I don't own. I was only using it to rip fat clouds and get outrageously baked, just as God intended. Y'all suckers ain't got shit on me. Wow, Corp just got Dempsey rolled. You guys should have been here. That's explicitly why we sent you, Derek. Well, still, Corp's on the back foot, so let's see what he's got up his sleeve. Well, Miss Burpwinter, this puts us into a bit of a conundrum. Possession is nine-tenths of the law, and therefore you've just removed nine-tenths of my case. Eat it, pencil neck. 
Your Honor, I'd like to move for recess. Woohoo, recess! Okay, Mr. Fortress, I will give you five minutes to get your case back together. The court is in recess. You should give him five minutes to pick up his teeth with broken fingers. Okay, guys, well, I'm going to go enjoy recess. I'm going to try to see if I can get, like, a pickup game of football or something together in those five minutes. Um, but back to you in the studio. Thank you, Derek. No footy in the court. While we're waiting to get back to the goings-on inside the courtroom, let's take a look outside the courtroom with Richter Hammock Slam up in the QWRP traffic coopter. How are things looking, Richter? Everyone is still inside, Graham. Sorry, where? The courthouse. I've had my eye on this building for at least six hours. Why? In case Burp Winter makes a runner. Richter, she's 86 years old, needs a cane, and evidently has the worst glaucoma we've ever heard of. Be that as it may, there is a white Ford Bronco parked in a handicapped spot outside of the courthouse, and I am not taking my eyes off it until this trial is over. I want my Emmy. Does it belong to Ms. Burp Winter? Is it idling? I think it's the janitors, but I don't have enough evidence to say that they're not in cahoots. Nevertheless, the minute that thing moves, I am putting a 308 slug straight through the engine block. Richter, I need to ask you a question, and I need you to be straight with me. Are you currently leaning out the door of your helicopter above the courthouse with a rifle? Graham, with the amount of space in the back of a Bell 222, I have no reason to lean out of the helicopter. Of course, now that I say it out loud, that sounds absurd. Back to you! Who sold Richter a gun? For all we know, he stole it from the gun rack on a pickup truck that was stuck in traffic somewhere near the Chumble floodplain. I'm never going outside again. Well, lucky for you, that's why we sent Derek down to the courtroom. I think recess should almost be over. Let's head back down there. Derek, how was recess? It was good, Graham. I couldn't find anyone to play football, so I just traded for a Charizard. Traded what? What? No, I mean, I, um, court, court, house, court, is court back off recess? Oh, yeah. Uh, Well, the judge is back in her seat, and they called everyone back to order, and Sandra's been dismissed, so I guess she goes back to the rum tunnels or wherever it is that she lives, and Corp's taking the floor. Ready for round two, limp dick? Let's go. I do so love these trials. We really, really get to know each other. It's so friendly. Mr. Fortress, you wanted to address the court. Yes, Your Honor. We no longer have sufficient evidence to convict Miss Burpwinter of this crime. However, a crime has still been committed, and therefore it is up to this court to determine who will stand for these crimes. Pardon me for intruding, Mr. Fortress, but I actually thought it was the job of the Innsberg PD to put together a case. Are you telling me that we're just going to start throwing around random suspects? Your Honor, you and I both know Officer Steve, and we know that reviewing things isn't exactly his forte. So we have established today that there is one culpable entity in this crime, and that is the city of Innsberg. However, justice requires a single person to be held accountable. Justice cannot hold the city of Innsberg in whole accountable. However, responsibility rests with the one who is in charge of Innsberg. Oh no! And that is the mayor. Oh god. (gasps) Wait! Oh my goodness! Corp Fortress just accused their worship, Mayor Steno Paperclips, of running a massive marijuana grow up here in Innsberg! Uh, This is weird. I didn't think it was going in this direction, but I'll allow it. And so, over the coming weeks and months, I would like to lay out my new case to bring the mayor to justice once and for all. I now call their worship, Mayor Steno Paperclips, to the stand. I guess I'll send a bailiff to go get them. I'm on my way. Hey, Corb, how does it feel to get dunked on like milk and cookies? Ma'am, I am interested in only one thing, and that is the witnessing of justice being served. Well, you sure did get served. Now, who wants to go outside for a safety meeting? Well, given recent developments, this court is in recess until tomorrow, where we will resume with their worship, Mayor Steno Paperclips, taking the stand somehow. Court dismissed. Well, there you have it, everybody. Um, I think this is unprecedented. 
in English criminal law or in French common law. Uh, I'm not sure where we go from here. Hey there, sweet cheeks. Want to burn some trees with Grandma? There's nothing safe about a forest fire. Well, you are lost, sonny. If you change your mind, I got a pocket full of lemon cush that'll knock you flat on your ass. Well, I like lemon, and I like safety. I'm going to go check this out. Guys, there's snacks at the safety meeting. Derek, just say no. Uh, I think I think he already hung up, Alex. I'm ready to hang it up. Well, today's proceedings certainly took a turn, but we'll pick up the trial again tomorrow. For now, we're coming up to the break, so when we come back... Edith Slump is here to interview someone who makes driftwood zithers, and Montgomery Cohn will be here to give us an update on the disappointing results of the Autumn Sideball Classic, at which point Alex and I will vacate the studio to just let the rage wash over you. Stick around, more Corpline after this. You're listening to Corpline here on QWRPFM. Thanks again to our sponsor, the Oracular Gentacular Spectacular. When you have no idea what to make for breakfast, try consulting the Oracular Gentacular Spectacular. It's an obscure part of the vernacular. Totally worth watching. Hmm. All right, I will add it to my Netflix queue. Oh, mm, Hulu queue, actually. Seriously? I only have Netflix and WWE Network. How do you live without HBO? I watch a lot of NXT UK. Okay, you need Hulu and HBO for sure. Disney Plus if you ever want to see another Marvel movie. And you can probably wait on Apple TV Plus unless you're super keen on Jason Momoa and Damp Fur. So what you're telling me is I absolutely must be subscribed to at least four other streaming services. Yes. How am I supposed to afford that? I don't know. Get a second job. Oh, yeah. I'm an adult. I can just do that. Thanks, James. I'm going to go hit up Craigslist. What? Oh, hey, Cameron. Yeah, Graham, what's up? You know about science, don't you? Well, I, on average, no, but I can, I can take a stab at it. Why? What's up? Well, I'm looking into breeding spiders. Oh, you, you, you don't need to breed spiders. They just appear, unbidden, typically, but not exclusively, in my underwear drawer. Wow, that's an intimate place to find a spider. Yes. Yes, it is. Anyway, if you want spiders, just come over. I've got lots. I don't want your boring old brown recluses. I'm trying to breed jumping spiders. That's why I need your help. What's a good way to monitor humidity? Uh, yeah, you'll need to order a hygrometer. Perfect. Any brand you'd recommend. Am I having a series of very specific hallucinations? Turns out there's a lot of money in spider breeding. At what cost, though? I, I don't know yet. That's why I asked you about, sorry, hygrometers, was it? I should not be helping you. I'll give you a free spider. Could you offer me a discount spider so it would be more socially acceptable for me to refuse? You can come over and watch the third season of The Orville when I get a Hulu subscription. And chips? Deal. Coach Wallace always did say that spider phobias were for quitters. Yo, Paul, check out what I found on Amazon. The reviews call it the Rolls-Royce of spider enclosures. It has a raised floor for a substrate heater. Are you still on that spider thing? Yes. I, I just figured somebody would have talked you out of it by now, and that today you'd have come in with a different, yet also terrible job. And then tomorrow you would have a third, this time actually dangerous job. It's a little self-aware, isn't it? And then you'd probably do something wrong off camera, and you give up on the whole scheme and finish up by just going to the store and renting the show you want to see. Okay, first, you can't just say that. Second, where am I going to rent a movie? It's 2019. I want to make money. My only options are spider breeding or tech startup, and I obviously don't have any good ideas. Except for spider breeding. That one's great, I think. Uh-huh. Oh, what's wrong? Have you given up on arachnid husbandry already? No. Shelob's already laid her first clutch, and I have a dozen people waitlisted for spiderlings. Weird. Why is that a problem? Because now I'm too busy being a successful spider breeder to watch any TV. 
The only thing I have time for is YouTube Vine compilations, because I have to keep a very close eye on the spiders after they mate. Otherwise, the females might eat the males. That all sounds... bad. It's just depressing, because YouTube is a monolith run by an algorithm that cares more about user engagement than quality control. Which is ironic, because this whole thing was spawned by a desire for premium TV. But on the bright side, the unskippable ads I get sometimes have Werner Herzog in them, so that's nice, I guess. Is it? I don't know, this timeline sucks. Hello, Krog. What this? Me, I make new invention. Roll down hill. Very fast, very fun. Make lots of noise, everybody here. Me call it Tumblr. Oh, me want to try. <laughs> Wait, no, do not hit post. Ooh. Oh, problematic post. Mm. Need to edit. Mm-hmm. Oh.